playoff victory. He's also played the most playoff games in the QMJHL in its history. His 65th playoff game today. And the Quebec Ramparts, two wins on the road in Ramouski, a tough place to get victories, and they come home with a 2-0 series lead. Ramouski was the top team in the QMJHL during the regular season. Now they have to find a way to win in this building, and the crowd is into it early. Simone Bork sends it into the Ramparts end. Ryan Graves ramps it around the boards. Alexis Loizo looking for somebody open. He goes back to the line. There's a shot from Bork. Got pinballed around. Came back in front. Boards are quite lively here at LaCalle Ramparts have iced this puck. And they'll be keeping a close eye on changes. Philippe Boucher is the head coach and general manager of the Quebec Ramparts. He won a Master Car Memorial Cup with the Val back in 1993. 748 NHL games played here in his second season behind the bench. And what makes this series interesting in that just a couple of years ago, he was the general manager of Ramouski and drafted 14 of this current roster. So he knows this Ramouski club very well. Maybe some inside info to get up in this series two games tonight. Ramouski has the puck in the offensive zone. LaBerge, he was their leading rookie scorer. In fact, he's the youngest player on Ramouski. The only rookie in their lineup today. He turned 18 in April. There's a shot for Moran. That deflected just wide. Ramouski is an older team. Nobody's younger than 18. Everybody else, 19, 20, and 21. Pass up to center. There's LaBerge. He'll just redirect it into the rampart zone. Going back to get it. Rookie sensation, Dimitro Timashov. He took a hit, but got the puck to Ross McDougall. Back in his own zone, Michael Jolie. Here's Timoshev. He was looking for Guillaume Gauthier in front, but that pass didn't connect. Puck set in deep by Olivier Garneau. Timoshev back to the line. Matt Murphy, who's got plenty of playoff experience and MasterCard Memorial Cup experience with his time with the Halifax Crusades. He's had a terrific playoff for the Ramparts this year. Anthony DeLuca, he is a goal scorer, led the team during the regular season and in the playoffs. This time he tried to center it, but nobody was there for the Oceanic, and Tina Schott takes over again. Sends it out to center. That pass winds up on the stick of Jolie. Been out there a while, now a pass to center ice goes off Tina Schott and over the boards. Serge Beausoleil is the head coach uh, for the Ramouski Oceanic. He's also the general manager here in his uh, third season. You go back to 2012, he took his team to the finals, getting swept out by St. John en route to Shawinigan. Lost in round one a year later in a four versus 13 matchup. We're upset by Gatineau and then lost in round two in a seven game series against Blanville last year. That was simply outstanding. They ended up losing game seven in overtime. So looking to avenge all of those losses with a win here in this series would serve Beausoleil well. William Couture gets it to Lapine along the boards, back behind the net. Couture looking in front, put it off the back of the net. That will force Jeremy Lapine to fetch it on the right wing side. He wraps it around. Sam Moran's out there. He's easy to spot. Couldn't keep the puck in though. He's six foot seven. We saw him before the game. Walking around, he has to duck under doorway. That's how tall he is. That's without skates. Lapine chasing after it in the corner. Another pass in front, but nobody there for the Oceanic. Simone Bork can't quite get to center. Made a pass instead. Lapine redirects it into the Quebec zone, and Ross McDougall takes over. McDougall back in the lineup. Played 12 games in the regular season, 13 here in the playoffs. They really love him. Now he's playing in that five hole. They've been looking to really cement that third pairing. McDougal now has cemented the five spot, but still playing around with their six teammates. Loizo working against Ryan Graves. Couldn't get a shot through. Graves, the Ranger pick, played it well. And here comes the top line. Anthony Duclair down that right wing side. He stops. Pass in front. What a save by Gandol. Oh, he made a huge stop on Ryan Graves. Now Graves is caught as Clapperton comes the other way for Ramuski. His centering pass is off the skate. Loizo's feed intercepted by Adam Ernie. He lofts it out to center, and Duclair's all over the place right now. Kick handling into the Ramuski zone. Crowd will boo. There was no penalty on the play, and they wanted one. One hopper in on Futali. Had a notion to play it. LaBerge got in there in a hurry, so that forced Futali to hold on. Well, amazing transition. We talked about the top line off the top of the broadcast. Ernie makes a great 
rink-wide pass. Now Duclair stops. He decides to pull up. Excellent vision here to go cross ice. Puts it right on the tape of Ryan Graves, who had pinched down. And Graves couldn't get it to go. Gained on a great read. He goes post to post in a hurry. Uses that right skate to stop him from over sliding as he banged it up against the post. Made an excellent stop. Huge early touch for Ramuski keeper early. McDougal over to the open side. There's Tima Shant. Banks it off the boards. Carno got to the blue line. Didn't get it out, though. Moran held the line. Tima Shant made a move. He was knocked down by LaBerge. She took a quick glance at the referee just to make sure nothing was being called. Well, Rob Fultz called it early on that Ramuski wanted to play bigger in this game. Really utilized that size. They've been throwing their body all over the place so far, but at least in the early going, it's Quebec with the best scoring chance of the game. Sam Moran gets the booze from the crowd here at La Colise. First round pick of the Flyers. Jerome Barrier. He waited for somebody to pop open. Couldn't get it to Carozza though. Knocked it off Jolie's stick. DeLuca. He's from Montreal. Behind the net. Gathers in the puck, but McDougal's right on his back. DeLuca spins away from that check. In front of Jolie. And he's stopped by Zach Kelly. His first big save of the game. Jolie was terrific in game one of this series. He had his hat trick. His team still wound up losing 7-4. to four. They need more of that offense from Jolie in this game. Well, he has the potential to do that over a, a point per game in the last two regular seasons for Jolie. Jolie being watched by Vladimir Kachev. Jolie bumps with Brouillard. They paid more attention to each other, and the puck came outside the line. Knocked down at center ice by Barrier, and he hit it with a high stick, and that will stop play. Well, Anthony DeLuca is a sniper, but he does a really good job here down low and working behind the net. And you'll see it's Jolie trying to find position in front of the net. He realizes that DeLuca has possession, so he slips out to the front of the net, does a nice job kicking it off the outside blade of his skate to get himself a backhand opportunity. But Fucali equaling what Gendon did against Graves to keep this thing scoreless. Played five and a half minutes here in game three of the President's Cup final here in the QMJHL. Both these teams will be taking part in the MasterCard Memorial Cup in a couple of weeks. Which one will be the QMJHL champions? Right now, the Ramparts are in the driver's seat. They knew they were in as the host team. And they have peaked at the right time, it appears. Lapine just inside the line, but he could get no further than that. Yannick Turcotte. He's caught by Couture, so he'll spin back, take that check as he got the puck down to the Ramuski zone. Brouillard could not keep it in. Matt Murphy, his cross ice pass nearly picked off by Couture, and fortunately for the Ramparts, that puck goes out of play. Well, RJ, Philip Droshe is the backup goalie for Ramuski in this game, a second round pick of Dallas, but it was Louis Philippe Gendon that was uh, picked up from Drummondville at the trade deadline. and. Gendon has come in, he's 9-0, DeRoche just 3-3, three and three. but each of these two guys has played through the first two games. Gendon started, lasted 24 minutes in game one. DeRoche on the right started game number two and lasted 13 and a half minutes. And so really trying to find an answer and goal. I think six minutes into this game, looking at the way things are right now, it's got to be good for uh, Gendon to get a couple of early touches here and maybe gain some confidence. Four on four is a couple of Bentley's Couture and Turcotte are in the Bentley box. So, Philippe Boucher goes with Duclair and Echegaray. Lapperton and Gauthier answer for Ramuski. It's Gauthier along with Fork on this rush, and Gauthier tests Fucali, and Zach Fucali stopped him. Toronto against Montreal on that one. Fucali. Keeps it a 0-0 game. Hey, big guy. How'd you like to trade that sandwich for a photo with the Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Assemble your mighty combo today at Subway to get an Avengers collector card and a chance to win one of three heroic trips. See Marvel's Avengers Age of Ultron in theaters May 1st. Subway, eat fresh. Come on, man. Get behind the wheel and it all comes together. Power to accelerate and exhilarate. 
squeezing every last kilometer out of every last liter. A ride that adapts to any surface. Safety features so advanced, it was awarded the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Sometimes, things really do add up. The all-new 2015 Chrysler 200. So what about that stock? Sure thing, right? Actually, knowing the kind of risk that you're comfortable with, I'd steer clear. Really? Really. Straight talk. Now, based on your strategy, I do have some other thoughts. It's a big deal, and it's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. A lot of pressure on Philippe Boucher as the head coach and general manager to put together a worthy host team. That's become a topic at the MasterCard Memorial Cup the last couple of years. And things were dicey in the first round against Cape Breton. It took seven games for Quebec to dispose of the Screaming Eagles. But since then have gone on an 11-0 run. And, you know, talking to a couple of guys yesterday, the theory with all that pressure in that first series was we were playing not to lose. And anytime you play not to lose, inevitably you end up losing games. And so they gained confidence by winning game seven. And all of a sudden, Quebec started to turn around and say, we're going to play to win games. And that's what's allowed them to go on that 11-0 run. And that adversity really brought them together. Anthony DeClaire talked about it. Really is a brotherhood in that room now that they survived the first round series and have cruised ever since. Real exclamation point on this 11-game winning streak, winning the first two in Ramuski. That's an accomplishment. Ramuski only lost four times in regulation on home ice during the regular season. Especially with the way that this rivalry has been over the course of the years. It seems to be their extra juice in Ramuski, but they just uh, couldn't play well enough at home to pick up a win, and now in a big hole. Goche wins the faceoff. Christopher Clapperton behind the net. Now he's up to the top of the circle. Tried to slip a shot through. Goche gets to it. Another shot on goal for Goche, and calmly stopped by Foucault. Goche has one goal in this postseason. Has chipped in with 12 assists. Baudouin trying to desperately keep this puck in. Can't do it, and Ryan Graves leads the rush for the Ramparts. Graves used to be a stay-at-home defenseman. All of a sudden, this year, he's really found an offensive flair to his game. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see which road he takes once he makes his way to the professional ranks. A New York Rangers draft pick who, as he has shown this year, has that offensive flair to him, but he's best known for his ability to take care of business in his own end and in front of his own goal. Morant ignores the crowd as he gets to center ice. Up to Jan Kostelik. Kostelik is an import from the Czech Republic. He's a Winnipeg Jets pick. Kostelik trying to control along the boards, getting a rough ride as he does so. Deluca poked off his stick, and then some good eye-hand coordination to knock the pass down. Kachev staying with it, gets it to Varian. Couldn't move back to the line. Defenseman wasn't in the spot yet. Now waiting is Brouillard. Pass won't come to him yet. Kachev trying to spin away from Loiso. There's a pass down low. Murphy, he's scored twice in this series. He wanted his third, but couldn't get that pass from Kachev, and Ramuski's iced it. You know, one of the unheralded defensemen for the Ramuski Oceanic is Guillaume McSwain, and he makes a great play here because Katjev is really shifty. You have to pay attention to your assignments, and McSween did exactly that as Katjev turned. He had his man left side of your screen, and good job by McSwain to take away Murphy, pinching in off the point and take that opportunity away. We've seen Graves do it, we've seen Murphy do it. Much more active of the Quebec Ramparts defenseman here than we've seen in previous views. Simone Bort. Makes a short pass, takes a return feed, and he comes out to center ice. Turcotte and Couture back on the ice, and Turcotte's gone right to Couture immediately when they were let out of the penalty box. They go straight to their benches, though. Nothing else results. <laughs> well, they're still talking, and they can almost reach each other. Guillaume Gauthier, he's got some good hands when he gets an opportunity. Couldn't pull the trigger from the spot he was in. Baudouin, he's bumped by Gauthier. Puck comes in front, it's still bouncing around. Ramparts are able to get control. There's Gauthier with a shot. Rebound, Tima Shab comes up with it. Gets to some open ice, now he's looking at the net. There's a shot, that's deflected, stopped, and then redirected in. Gauthier gets it, Ramparts lead.
RJ, you talked about Olivier Garneau yesterday in practice, how he's a guy that really doesn't get a lot of attention. He's a younger player, but you can tell he's got really good skills. And here, as this puck's kept in by Timoshov, it'll be Garneau who goes to the front of the net. He creates a bunch of traffic. Left side of your screen, that's Goche. So when Garneau taps that puck off the pads of Gendon, who's there to pick it up? It's Goche. But give the kid a lot of credit going to the front of the net. He creates that distraction so Gendon can't cover up the rebound. And Goche with excellent hands. And eye coordination bats it in about shin high to give the Remparts a one nothing lead. Tima Shab, the leading rookie scorer in the regular season and playoffs in the QMJHL, had lots of time to make a play, and he did. Bukali, third defenseman title as he stick handles behind his own net. No harm done. Out the center's Echegari. His pass too far ahead of Duclair. Ernie will give chase, but Kostelik gets it up to Gucci. That pass to Clapperton, a little bit behind him, and it'll wind up going right on Fucali. Fucali was fun to watch in practice yesterday. Had a stretch where he wasn't allowing anything past him. Crowd cheers as Christopher Clapperton makes his way to the penalty box. A Florida pick, and a pest extraordinaire is Clapperton, and you see the stick knocked right out of the hands of Raphael Mahu, and that sends Clapperton to the box. And Clapperton's at his best when he plays right along that edge, and playing along that edge means every now and then you're going to cross the line and end up where he is right now in the penalty box. Ramuski's penalty kill has been excellent. They had killed off 30 straight, 36 straight in the playoffs until game one. Matt Murphy had a power play goal, but they're 44 for the last 45. Lampard's already with a 1-0 lead here in game three. Looking for some breathing room. Team shot. Brings it into the Ramuski zone. Dumps it to the corner. The aggressive penalty kill pays off as Couture gets the puck down the ice. Nicola Brouillard. He is a power play quarterback specialist. Works his way through center ice. That wasn't easy with Jolie hacking and whacking. Catch him. He takes a hit, couldn't make a pass. Kostelik took him out of the play, and then Loiso got the puck right on Fukali. Ryan Graves, 15 goals in the regular season. Here's Brouillard, moves it to the right wing side. Adam Ernie, 17 goals in 17 games in this postseason. His pass to Graves, doesn't get there. It's picked off by Loiso. Maybe a shorthanded chance. Three on two developing, Kostelix jumped in. His pass doesn't get through, a good block by Graves. 40 seconds to go in this power play. Not much happening so far for the Ramparts. Here we are, over to his defense partner, Graves. He lightly sends it to the corner. The Rams first man on it, spins away from the Ford check of Echegaard. Graves holds the line, gets it over to Brouillard. Which is spots with Ryan Graves. One time shot. That's blocked by Moran, and he's jumping around. It's stunned. Got him in the leg. Puck stays in. Ernie's pass. That's blocked by Baudouin. Moran ignores that pain, wins a battle in the corner, gets it up ahead, and then it's down the ice by Anthony Shabato. And lifting to the bench is Moran. It's been a tough series for him so far, so you know he's out to prove that he's a better player than that here in game three. Ramuski has killed off 45 of the last 46 times they've been shorthanded. Fork, front of his own net. Go chase, skating well. Had to dodge one of his own players. Everybody back for the ramparts. Go chase still digging in there. Carozza lifted his stick, and it's safely off the boards and out to center. Barrier shifts it ahead to Carozza. Another penalty coming up. An interference call. Ramparts with a 1-0 lead. Just had a power play, didn't get much done. They'll get another chance when we come back. Arctic Spas, engineered for your family. Speedy Gloss presents The Bees Wing. A sudden change in temperature, and it could turn into a crack. 
Don't wait. Repair your windshield before you have to replace it. It's important for your safety. Plus, thanks to your insurance provider, it could be free for you. If you have a bee's wing on your windshield, trust the certified Speedy Glass technicians. Nearly half a million Canadians do every year. Online or by phone. Book your appointment at Speedy Glass. Speedy Glass Repair. Speedy Glass Repair. You decided to downsize your home. Then I said the contract should include an inspection, which revealed you weren't alone. Let a Remax agent guide you. Remax, dream with your eyes open. Tim Hortons Dark Roast Coffee, a brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be onto something. Try it today. Arctic Spas, engineered for your family. Well, on the Quebec bench with Phil Boucher already leading 1 0 now with the power play. Has Ramuski brought anything in the early goalings that has surprised you? Uh, well, they're playing well. They've got a, a few chances to control the puck on our own end, but they're such a good team, so nothing is unexpected from them. With this opportunity on the power play, what do you try to do? Just fast attack? Keep it simple. We like to put pucks on net with a heavy net presence and see what happens. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. They didn't have a shot on their previous power play. Almost immediately, they get another chance for the man advantage. In this series, Ramparts are one for ten. It's the big line at Chigari, Ernie, and Duclair up front. Murphy and Broyar on the point. And Murphy just did keep that in. Gauthier might have been off to the races. Couture. His speed for Gauthier out of his reach. Still came out to center. Broyar. Looks up ice. Duclair's open. Takes that pass clean. Tries to go wide on Charles David. Oh, Chigari in front, but couldn't get it on goal. Moran got a stick on it. Broyard over to Murphy. Quick pass down to the corner. That's where Echegarry will chase after. Moves it to Ernie. Duclair's open. Back to Broyard. Good puck movement this time by the Ramparts. Another block by Ramuski. Broyard over to Murphy. Looks at the net. No lane to shoot. How about Broyard? Fakes. Lane opens up. It's off the leg. Hits the crossbar. Still bouncing around in front. And Duclair looks skyward as he missed on that chance. Duclair gets it now. Goes back to the line. Murphy was wanting to jump down low, so that pass missed him. Duclair dumps it in. Gandon comes out, but can't control it behind his net. Loizzo quickly on it. Kostelik, plenty of time to clear, and he makes no mistake. Bukali waits till Flapperton's right there, then plays the puck. No urgency here from Brouillard. Starts up ice. Makes a short pass to Graves. He's forced to dump this puck in. Gets it over to Timashak. He bounces it back to Brouillard. It's outside the line again, and Ramuski, with just under 30 seconds to go in this kill, have an opportunity to get it down the ice. And they do. Loizzo poking at it. Raphael Mahu stops his progress. Vladimir Kachet over to Timashak. His cross ice pass. It's a good one to Kachet. He gets to the top of the circle. He goes rank wide. Timashak in front. And had to react to a deflected puck, and he made a fine save. The puck actually deflected off Guillaume McSway, and Gandon had to be really quick to react with the left pad, but a couple of really good chances here for the Quebec Ramparts on the penalty, and you see Etchegaray, look at the middle of the ice, wide open, he's calling for it, he gets it, and he just can't get it to go, but Etchegaray wide open in front of the net, and then Brouillard's shot, Bounces off Moran, hits the crossbar and stays out. And finally, it's Guillaume McSwain. Gets his stick on this puck right here, deflecting it back into the pad of Gandon. Gauthier, no rebound there for him to get a second chance. Just eight seconds to go in this power play. A face-off win for the Oceanic. Not cleared, though. Graves sends it back down low. Gandon out to play it. Made a pass to Moran. Jolie out to center. Bork's back on the ice, and that is... Two for two on the penalty kill for Ramuski. You know, but if you're a coach, you're saying, at least I like the looks I got first time around. I didn't even get a shot on goal in two minutes. At least we got a couple of good looks and a crossbar in there. Officially one shot recorded on that power play. Still a one nothing lead for Quebec. Kostelik sends it down low. Now five on five. Let's see if Ramuski can go to work. 
DeLuca. He'll go back to the line. It's Jolie covering up there. Working to get away from Mahou. Kostelik. Wines doesn't fire, though. Furcott takes a whack. It's kept in by Kostelik. Jolie. The shot bounces around. Didn't get through to the net. Asimo Karotza took a hit. Now it's loose. Chapato. He'll try to make a feed to Pickle at the line. Verrier intercepted. Now it's a foot race. Jolie got there in plenty of time. And look back at that Ramparts blue line. It's DeLuca. And that fine shot of his. Test Pukeli makes another save. And then Bruyar and DeLuca go heavily into the boards. It looks like they'll both be going. The two 15s are making their way to the penalty box. Ramparts lead game three. One to nine. Introducing new dry spray antiperspirant from Dove Men Plus Care. With 48 hour sweat protection plus a non irritant formula that goes on instantly dry. New dry spray. Tough on sweat, not on skin. Now instantly dry. Tim Horton's Dark Roast Coffee. A brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich, full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. Hi, Tom. Hey, how's the college visit? You remember it. It's good. Does it make the short list? You remember that too. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Knowing our clients personally is what we do. It's OK. This is what we've been planning for. Thanks. Bye. Edward Jones is the big company that doesn't act that way. Zach Bucali of Quebec has always been active on social media. And on this Sunday, he spent out a very special tweet. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Mom, for all that you've done for me. We can all agree that they are the real MVPs. We also say Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Now, there are two guys in the penalty box. They don't like each other much, RJ, but I'm pretty sure they love their moms. <laughs> That's a good bet. Yeah, Happy Mother's Day. Brouillard DeLuca. They're the two in the penalty box, two key contributors for their respective teams. We'll play four on four. Just over five minutes to go here in the opening period. Lots of room for Duclair to work. Starts to pick up some speed. Now he makes a pass to Ryan Graves. Graves from a sharp angle and chance to jam down, but he had to post cover. Christopher Clapperton. Heads up ice. Delayed penalty coming up. It's going to go against Quebec. There's a shot from Clapperton. That's stopped by Fucali. He didn't allow a rebound, but he's going to see a few more pucks in the near future as Duclair heads to the box. Well, you know, coming up ice, he and Clapperton were getting into it, uh, Declare, and Clapperton took that one extra shot when nobody was looking, and so as the puck went back towards Quebec's end, Declare thought, well, I'm going to do a little something here to try and help out, and he slashes Moran because of the frustration he felt by being bothered by Clapperton going the other way. It's a power play for Ramuski. Four on three power play. Loizo gets to the middle of the ice. His pass knocked away by a good stick from Rafael Mahu. Kostelik, who's got some room up high, passes over to Clapperton. Middle of the ice. That shot rang off the post. Kept in by Kostelik. He'll go to Christopher Clapperton at the line. Into the middle. Makes a pass to the corner. Jolie, cross ice to Kostelik. He takes a shot. Loizo was there. He was looking for the redirect. Three forwards out for Serge Beausoleil's Oceanic on this power play. Jolie, stick handling, waiting. Right through the blue paint. Nobody there for the Oceanic. Here's Kostelik again. Trying to signal to Clappert into switch spots. It'll be Jolie who goes up high. There's a save by Foucault. Rebound was there. Thanks to Gary, got to it and cleared it. Kostelik trying to waste no time. Ernie got a change in. He's a fresh penalty killer. Clapperton's shot is blocked by Adam Ernie. Now Kostelik. He takes a shot. That's blocked by Ryan Graves. It hurt. Another chance. That one got through, but Kukali stopped it. Eliza goes to the line to Clapperton. Graves is limping around out there. Kostelik. His pass doesn't get through Graves. Kostelik gets it back. There's a blast. A good pass saved by Bucali. Kostelik back to Clapperton. Lots of pressure here from the Oceanic. Loizo 
scores! Power play goal, the Lizos tied it. And just when Zach Fucali looked impenetrable, they finally get one by him. And it's on the glove side, an excellent shot by Loizzo at 96 points in the regular season for the Ramuski Oceanic. I mean, a couple of block shots, a couple of really good saves by Fucali, and then Loizzo gets into the spot and he says, I've had enough of this. You'll see him slip out away from Mahu, circle around the top of the circle and unleashes it, getting it past Fucali. Fucali doing a good job finding that puck, and you can see Mahu's body was in the way and that screen for Cali, a little late reacting with the glove, and we're tied at one. Loizzo with his third power play goal of this postseason. Six playoff goals for Loizzo. They're over Ager. High game, game three. Three minutes to go in the opening period. Carlo Fiore. Kicks it along the boards. Carozza gets it to the line. Lapine digging for it. McDougal's out there. They continue their battle in front of the benches. Couture bumps with Fiore. Hawks in the skates of Couture. Trying to come out of the corner. There's a hard hit on Bashaw. That was Verrier that came in throwing his weight around. Still working hard for it. Couture has it pinned along the boards. Comes to Fucali. Makes sure it's safely behind his net. Carozza. Over to Kachev. He can be shifty and difficult to contain. Sam Moran. His pass gets to Jolie. Kachev is not down behind the play. That's why the crowd's upset. No penalty coming. Dimitro Timasha. Long shot. That's caught by Gandol. And then Verrier going to the net. Made contact with Gandol. And that will get some attention from the Oceanic. Well, Simone Bork was the one who knocked Goche in there. There's Timishov with the shot, and it looks everything is clear and dandy, but Varia gets bumped around, and he gets bumped by Simone Bork right here. Can't put on the brakes, ends up falling on the head of Gandon. And good thing nothing further for Gandon, who's been sharp so far for the Ramuski Oceanic in this game. And no question it was a storyline coming in. What were the goaltenders going to be like for Ramuski? At least here through almost 18 minutes, Gandon has answered that question. Face off to the right of Zach Fucali. Verrier did take a penalty on that play, so it is another power play for the Oceanic. Capitalized on their... Previous opportunity just moments ago. Lapperton comes in to help win the face off. Costoy holds in the line for the Oceanic. Passes over to Clapperton. Redirect in front by Jolie, just wide of the net. Here's Loise the goal scorer. Back to Costoy. He's standing still, waiting for the formation to get in the correct spot. Loise, lone man at the line, makes a pass to Clapperton. Top of the circle, looks at the net, instead passes off to Gauthier. Uh, who's on his back? Clapperton in the corner. Goes over to the other corner. There's Jolie back to the line. Kostelik. Now to the corner, Jolie. He picks up some speed. Kostelik. All the backdoor play, and there's another block for Ryan Graves. Extra Gary with a steal. There's a pass to Ernie. Graves, after all those shot blocks, is trying to join Ernie on this rush. Ernie elected to shoot. Game don't make the save, and the puck directed out of play. A penalty called on the play and an excellent play by Echegaray at the top there. He was being bothered, he was being hooked, but he got his stick down to the ice and was able to make a great exit pass. Here's Echegaray here. You think he's going to leave the zone? Jolie all over him and then Echegaray finally makes that pass. Jolie screaming with his hands out that he shouldn't have been called there. It is called against him and that will equalize the, the very a penalty and allow these teams to play for a side here for at least a minute seven. Interesting times here in the latter stages of the first period. Four on four. Sam Moran has to deal with Duclair, makes a pass over to Charles David Beauclair. Overage defense gets it to DeLuca.
It is a 1-1 game. Four on four right now into the final minute of the first period here in game three of the President's Cup final. Quebec Ramparts, they open the scoring. Guillaume Gauthier, and not too long ago, it was tied on the power play. Alexis Loizo of Ramouski. And now under 30 seconds to go in the opening period. There will be a few seconds of power play time for Quebec before this period expires. Bork knocks his man down, comes up with a pot. Loizo on the right wing side. Bork's joining the rush. Loizo takes a shot. It's in front of the net. It stayed there. Nobody around it. So Adam Ernie came back to get it. Brief power play. Five seconds to go in the period. Ernie with a shot from center ice. That's easily handled by Gandon. And he decides to hang on. And that will result in a face-off with just 2.4 seconds remaining. And not a bad play by Ernie at all because A, you get the shot on goal, but B, you get the offensive zone face-off with enough time to win it and get another shot on goal. And so these two teams going at it toe-to-toe -to -toe, and Ramuski has to be happy with the way things have gone here so far, just keeping Quebec to one goal. Quebec is 0 for 2 on the power play. They'll have just over 40 seconds for this man advantage carry over into the second period. These two rivals are even after a period. Ramparts open the scoring. Ramuski's tied it up. A raucous crowd here at the Coliseum. And a good, entertaining first period in the President's Cup here in the queue, Jeff. RJ, thanks very much. Back here at the CHL on Sportsnet Studios alongside Damian Cox and Todd Warner. Yes, to RJ's point, that place is electric in the Coliseum. It will be that way at the end of May for the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And they had good reason to cheer early. We'll talk so much about the Ramouski net mining situation. Philippe de Rocher, Louis-Philippe Guindon, who may have been the best trade deadline acquisition, the goaltender coming in from Drummondville. But how did you guys read his first period? Well, well, he made the great save early. Yeah, great save early on, and then on the goal, uh, not absorbing the rebound to the best of his ability. So what, what happens here is the shot gets through from the point. Uh, good screen in front, mind you, and took take away his eyes. But this is, this is early on, and the, the, the big save off the bat here. Shot through, good kick save, and this is Timoshoff just settling it out, getting his head up, good patience, puts it through. There's a screen in front. He doesn't absorb the rebound, and good hands by Goche to swat it in the net, but... The good and the bad here. Timoshoff, good shot, taking away his eyes. Gandon doesn't find it. Goche makes a nice play to swat it out of midair as it's going wide and keep it in play there. Nice goal. Now, Gandon was pulled in game two, so yep. you think maybe he's a little rattled. But after that, he did make a few more saves. Uh, and made it through the first period and allowed his team to come back and tie the game. You know, you could make the argument if Kelowna gets by Brandon, they're up 2 nothing right now, they may have the best one-two net mining situation, Jackson Whistle and Michael Herringer, but I would put Ramuski right underneath that and maybe have the better one-two between these two you guys. You just like saying Jackson Whistle, don't you? Well, how can you not enjoy <laughs> saying a name like Jackson Whistle? Yeah. Although Jordan Perperity from Brandon is a pretty nice name to say as yeah. well. Uh, Anthony DeClaire, you want to talk about the good and the bad? We've seen the good from Anthony DeClaire. Yeah. We've also seen some bad penalties. Yeah, Anthony Duclair, you know, um, it's been a, a kind of his Achilles heel, staying sharp and not playing playing within the rules of his team. I know uh, Philip uh, uh, Boucher. Oh, sorry, Boucher's had yeah. some trouble with him in the past, just staying disciplined, and this is his problem. So the good and the bad from him, undisciplined penalties, puts his team down four on three. I mean, watch this. And he just two-hander two behind the play, and that's not smart. He gets hooked up here with... The big man, it takes two-hander at him, so that's not smart. And then this leads to the goal. Loiseau, a great shot through a screen, but un nonetheless, undisciplined penalty. And that's been Anthony Declare's Achilles heel, staying within the rules of the team, staying disciplined. They're going to need him to do that when they get to the tournament. Well, and, and if you're going to win a Memorial Cup, you need your veteran guys to do that. And, and the funny thing is Quebec's in a great situation to really put, you know, their their foot on uh, Ramouski's throat. But then after that, they take another bad penalty. Um, and for running the goalie, sort of senseless. So you, you, you worry a little bit about Quebec's focus a little bit in this game. And Ramuski, I mean, in that first period they had, they killed off a couple of penalties. This game could have been much more one side instead it's 1 1 heading into the second. Yeah, undisciplined stuff. They're going to need to be sharper than this going forward. And they have a chance to put this team away and get some rest before the tournament. So smarter play from Quebec from here on in is going to be mandatory. You know, you look at Philippe Boucher. He's the head coach, the general manager of the Quebec Ramparts. And it wasn't that long ago, just a couple of seasons ago, he was the GM of the Ramouski Oceanic. He helped put this team that we're seeing this afternoon 
together. He helped yeah. put the team that we're going to see in the Master Carbon World Cup together. How much of an advantage is that? for the Ramparts. It's got to be an advantage. He knows the roster. He's got to feel some pride as well as the GM for assembling that team. So good for him. And he'll know this roster well. Quebec's been prepared to this point to play against them. So he's got the upper hand in this series, I think, because he's been with both teams. He's had to deal with a lot of pressure this year, making the Fukali deal. That the, They're yep, the yep. host for the uh, Memorial Cup. Everything has sort of been adding up all year long. And to get this team playing very, very well in the spring, I mean, kudos to him. And questions all season long. I mean, we, we, we've mm -hmm. sat here on this panel. We've seen online, television, radio, everyone's question, do the Ramparts have a, can they field a competitive team at the Memorial Cup tournament? 11 games they've won in a row, so they're hitting their well, stride. And, and even at the beginning of the playoffs, when he made that gutsy call not to start Fukale right off the, uh, bat, right off the bat and go with Booth, and they got off to a slow start, again, more pressure on him, but his team did respond. Team responded, Zach Fukale responded, Kalen Booth goes in for the first game, that was probably that little, what they called it in hockey, the cup check? To say, hey, send a message. Sending a message indeed. We are tied up at ones. It's our favorite segment coming up, Tard Warren. You know what that means? Stag chili? You got it, bud. <laughs> Stay or stick around. Tied at ones. CHL on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Jack Links. Feed your wild side. Inside the Stanley Cup playoffs with hockey's best. Hockey Central pregame every night on Sportsnet. What's so special about Rec League hockey? Stellar goaltending and going out after for a pitcher of Molson Canadian and BP's new Wings 2 4. Boston Pizza will make you a fan. There's an old Jamaican saying. The older the moon, the brighter it shines. At the Appleton Estates, we are Rompi. Are you satisfied? There's nowhere to go! Can I help you? Yeah, we were just looking, looking at for the this SUV. Oh, well, here it is. It's a the four speed, 2.5 liter automatic, leather seats, tech package, low mileage, and the price is right compared to other listings in the same condition. And people really, really love this car. Look at these owner reviews. Wow. Sold. <laughs> You're good. Anyone can buy and sell like a pro with autotrader.ca. The battle against time against the elements, against each other. Driven by shouts of the loyal, striving to gain a second, fighting not to lose an inch. An endless, grueling grind through the most beautiful place on Earth. The opening chapter in cycling's most prestigious trifecta. A summer of cycling begins now. Giro d'Italia, May 9th to 31st on Sportsnet One. Big night coming up. All begins at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific with Hockey Central. Then that gives way to the Rangers facing off against the Caps. Rangers look to stave off elimination against Washington. That game on CBC Hockey Central at 9.30 Eastern. Then at 10 o'clock, it is the Flames. They look to keep their playoff hopes alive. It is game five against the Anaheim Ducks. This one at the Honda Center in Anaheim. All this can be watched as well on Rogers Game Center Live. Time now for the play of the first period. Brought to you by Stag Chili. Saves for Success program, where saves made will result in contributions up to $30,000 to minor hockey teams. StagChili.ca for details, Todd. Timishoff with good patience settles this out. Garnell provides the screen in front, and that's a left-hand ladle by Goche <laughs> to top that one home. Guillaume Goche, your Stag Chili play of the period. Shoveled that one in with a spoon. StagChili.ca, as always. When we come back, we'll talk to Troy Smith about what the Oshawa Generals are doing to Connor McDavid. Meanwhile, have a look at Alexis Loazzo. His sixth has this one tied. It's the opening chapter in cycling's most prestigious trifecta. Giro d'Italia, May 9th to 31st on Sportsnet One. You dreamt of a condo with a view. But then I showed you a suburb school, and the view of your daughter's future made a house look really cool. Let a Remax agent guide you. Remax, dream with your eyes open. 
What if the Earth literally cracked open? Everybody down! The largest quake in history is coming. Stay calm, okay? We are not prepared. God be with you. May 29th. From window shopping to shopping online, no credit card is more accepted than MasterCard. Because turning the everyday into days that change everything is priceless. Proudly accepted at Walmart. For over 35 years, insurance companies and property owners have counted on Winmar to restore life back to normal after times of disaster and insurable events. With over 85 locations across Canada, no project is too big or too small for your local Winmar. From minor home restorations to restoring your property, give your local Winmar a call to see how we can assist. Learn more about Winmar at winmar.ca. Speedy Glass presents The Half Moon. All it takes is one speed bump for it to turn into a crack. Don't wait. Repair your windshield before you have to replace it. It's important for your safety and to save time and money. If you have a half moon on your windshield, trust the certified Speedy Glass technicians. Nearly half a million Canadians do every year, online or by phone. Book your appointment at Speedy Glass. Speedy Glass Speedy Tim Horton's Dark Roast Coffee. A brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. Sportsnet.ca takes you deeper inside the National Hockey League because all you really want is the whole story. Rise to relive spectacular moments, plus get ahead with a unique perspective from the insiders. Throughout the day, follow for TV listings and match previews. Then when the puck drops, don't just watch the game, be a part of it. Headlines, stats, trends, and exclusive analysis. Only one website has hockey covered 24-7. Sportsnet.ca. All right, last night, Western Hockey League final. Rockets facing off against the Wheat Kings. Kelowna and Brandon. Rockets lead the series 1-0. Pick it up in the third, tied to threes. Kelowna shorthanded. Nick Merkley draft eligible, as Damian will tell you. He gets a break, makes a move. He scores second of the night. That's the game winner. Kelowna takes it 5-3. They head home with a 2-0 series lead. Wow. Meanwhile, OHL championships. Erie facing off against Oshawa. Oshawa leading the series 1-0 this last night as well. Third period, 2-1 to one Generals. Bradley Latour springs Tobias Lindbergh. Breakaway, Deeks backhand. Nice little tuck pass. Devin Williams. Generals scored twice in one minute and 23 seconds. Connor McDavid fails to record a point for the first time this postseason. Yes, the Oshawa Generals are up 2-0 in their best of seven against the Erie Otters. Joined now by Kitchener Rangers former head coach Troy Smith, who's here to break down exactly what the Oshawa Generals are doing, not just to Connor McDavid, that is spectacular, by the way, but also the entire high-powered Erie Otters offense. Well, they're doing a great job of eliminating time and space. And really, when you talk about offense, creating it or taking it away, that's what you want to do. And, and when you watch some of these clips here, specifically against McDavid, they're targeting him. There's Cole Castles. This is a power play opportunity for Erie. Reads it, jumps all over him. The next one, they swing right with him. They don't even worry about the puck. Could have made a, made a play on the puck. Ignore it, just worrying about Connor. And then in the neutral zone here, they're doing a great job of clogging it up. Every time Erie's coming across the blue line, it seems they're outnumbered. There, it's five to three. Next one, this is an adjustment that uh, Chris Knobloch made in game two. They come back lower, try and create some more speed, but still, when they get to the blue line, it's four versus three, which is really eliminating Erie and Connor McDavid's ability to create offense. Then you get into the defensive zone here. Sometimes you're gonna need some help from your friends, Dakota Mermis, trying to cover Connor McDavid. 
Quick little switch here from Cole Castles, who's really done a fantastic job in the first two games of covering Connor, and it eliminates all of his time and space. So against the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, it was Darnell Nurse, and every time McDavid was out there, Nurse was out there. But Cole Castles, the Vancouver draft pick, he's doing the main work on McDavid? He, he is. He's, he's winning a lot of draws, which is eliminating uh, puck possession time for the Erie Otters and Connor, and, and uh, their whole team's really helping themselves by uh, working together. We'll see what answers Erie has uh, for the next game. Game three, by the way, goes Monday back at home in the Otters barn. Meanwhile, our game tied up at one's second period. Straight ahead, RJ, Sam, and Falzi. show your stripes all you gotta do is come out and play <laughs> kellogg's frosted flakes have flakes for fuel frosting for fun introducing new dry spray antiperspirant from dove men plus care with 48 hour sweat protection plus a non-irritant formula that goes on instantly dry new dry spray tough on sweat not on skin now instantly dry i'm a bit of a puck hog Fellas don't love my game, so to get back on speaking terms, I buy them the new Wings 2 for a Boston pizza. It makes up for all the passes I didn't give them. When you dream of summer, think Best Western. Stay two separate times now and get a $50 Best Western gift card for your summer getaway. And enjoy breakfast and free high-speed internet. Book now at bestwestern.com. So we're gonna get a new car. Yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking? Ah, oh, like a 2009. Maybe a 2011 hatchback. 35,000 kilometers, going for 20 grand. What's this? Looks like a 2012. Yeah, a bit pricier, lower mileage. Ooh, all-wheel drive turbo. That one's a crossover. Looks like a jacked-up hatchback. <gasps> Totes. Want to check them out? Sure, they're not far. I'll drive. I think you just found your car. Yay! Anyone can buy and sell like a pro with AutoTrader.ca. Tim Horton's Dark Roast Coffee, a brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich, full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. The Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight on Sportsnet. The challenge not insurmountable, but hope is fading. Comebacks have been the calling card for Calgary all season long. Never say die. Calgary Flames. But now a comeback is all that remains to keep the dream alive. Anaheim leads three games to one. Ducks, Flames. Game five tonight on Sportsnet and Rogers NHL Game Center Live. The Calgary Flames face a must win tonight in Anaheim against the Ducks. It's at 9.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Pacific on Sportsnet and Rogers Game Center Live. Things are near a must win situation for the Ramuski Oceanic. Second period about to go. Let's hand things over to Rob Falls. Big Frederick Goche. Frederick down 2 0 in the series. You knew you had to come and be physical in this game, and that looks like your game plan from the start. Yeah, I wanted to come out strong, uh, use, our, use our size to uh, their skill player out there, try to use our body, give it no time, no space. A lot of work to do here. you got to kill 40 seconds of a, a power play. What kind of work do you want to do against Fukali and the rest of Quebec? Just try to put some shots on net with traffic, win their zone, uh, kill the big PK, uh, block shot, and just be ready. Red, thanks very much. Thank you. Coach Jay mentioned to us, uh, RJ, that they have to use their size. They have to be physical, and we saw that in the first period. A lot of physical action between these two teams. You're right, Rob. Serge Beausoleil stressed it before the game, and they'll have to continue to play that way. Chapato comes out with a big bang, and there were bodies flying all over the place. And you know what? Some of the rivalry that we've seen throughout the eight meetings in the regular season and here through two games in the playoffs started to commence. And after the whistle stuff, Verrier falls on game. Down. That resulted in a penalty for Quebec. And we're seeing a lot more of that after the whistle stuff. Hey, let's realize that Yes, both these teams are going to play in the MasterCard Memorial Cup, but there's still a league title on the line, and that's extremely important. 43 seconds to be exact in power play time here for the Quebec Ramparts. Officially 0 for 2 in this game. 
face-off win by Frederick Goche. He's so good in that aspect. That allows Ramuski to get the puck down the ice. Force Quebec to go the whole 200 feet to make something happen. Now there's under 30 seconds to go in this power play. Nicola Brouillard takes a shot. That's stopped by Louis-Philippe Gandon. And didn't allow a rebound with Echegueri on the doorstep. Brouillard does a nice job just getting that shot on goal. But Gandon equally as good there, just covering up the rebound. Not giving away any second chances. We saw the lone goal for Quebec result in that in the first period. But a good entry and a tap back off the wall to get it through Briard. He's able to take it down to the top of the circles and with tons of traffic there, Gandon, no rebound allowed. Gauthier and Echegaray, two best face-off men for their respective teams, and Gauthier gets another face-off win. Moran, chance to clear off the glass. Kept in for a moment, Gauthier comes up with that loose puck. He'll take a long shot, that's wide of the goal. He told Rob they wanted to get shots on goal. He's had a couple himself. Bukali, he's brave, kept this puck in play. Only a few seconds to go in the power play, and Michael Jolie's back on the ice. Adam Ernie tried to get to the middle of the ice, and his stick broke on him as he tried to fire the puck. Jolie, he's knocked down by Raphael Mahou. Jolie's back up, might get a scoring chance, kick save Bukali. Jolie tried to control the rebound, but couldn't get his stick down. He was tied up. Has the puck again. There's another chance. The other pad of Bukalis kicks that one aside. Jan Kostelek. Over to his defense partner, Simone Bork. That half stick of Adam Ernie's is still in a dangerous spot in the Ramuski zone. Right in front of old tender Louis Philippe Gandon. He's not moving it to the boards. He's coming out of his net, though, to play this puck. Bork gathers it in in the corner. Dimashov got a piece of it. Puck stays behind the net. Over to help out is Costello. Olivier Garneau, the rookie, had an assist in the opening period on the Guillaume Gauthier goal. That's his first playoff point. Matt Murphy. Over to Gauthier. Pops it out to center ice. Pucks on the stick of Dimitro Timashov. Has to spin away from Guillaume McSween. Now on his bank is Anthony DeLuca. Coach A comes over to help out. Takes a shot, but that's wide of the net. Murphy at the blue line. Tried to bounce it off the end boards. Couldn't get it through. Andrew Pickle. Up ahead to Tyler Bolin. He goes to an open wing. That won't be icing. Waits. Rips it around. That was anticipated by LaBear. Oh, that's in the net. LaBear threw it in front. Devin St. Hilaire was there. He may have got a piece of it. The puck was redirected. Bottom line is Ramuski leads. Well, this is a really interesting play, RJ, because I think Graves tried to sell it as an icing call, and he went back there hesitantly. He only cleared it halfway around the board. You see him there, he's looking, maybe selling it, maybe selling it, and now it's a poor attempt where he reaches. It gets it only halfway up the wall. It's stopped there. It goes back down low. Both Graves and St. Hilaire are there, and it's St. Hilaire who's able to deflect this puck past Fucali and into the net. And so you never know what happens when you put pucks to the net. St. Hilaire is there, Graves can't contain him, and the Oceanic have a 2-1 lead. Early in the second period, Ramuski fell behind in this game, one to nothing. They trail in the series two games to none, losing both on home ice. This is a dangerous time for the Oceanic, but they have a lead here in game three. Good shot block, puck cleared again. Mahou goes to Brouillard. Now it's into the Ramuski zone. And all takes a look around is solid defenseman Yen Kostelik had lots of time to play that puck back out to the neutral zone. Still bouncing around. Here we are trying to get possession. Eliza pokes it into the Quebec zone. Didn't last in there very long. Maybe this time. Wrapped around Christopher Clapperton. Knew Eliza was behind him and he let that go. Dally made sure to cover the short side. Puck comes out again. Brouillard. Sets up shot behind his own net. Adam Ernie's at center ice. Forced back into his own zone by Baudouin. Etchegary. He goes to the red line, but now he's forced back by Vachon. Ernie over to the open side, out of the reach of Duclair, so Moran takes over. Charles David Baudouin. Makes a move around Marcus Cuomo. Brouillard loves that. Didn't allow the puck to get in deep. 
A lot of play in the neutral zone right now. Ramuski's offside. Marge, you want to take you back to the goal here, and just watch how this thing develops. And it just goes to show you, you really have to be focused. There's Fucali, he's looking up. Now watching the right side of your screen, entering the play of St. Hilaire and Graves. And Graves just kind of casually lets him go, and it gets part of St. Hilaire's stick and part of Graves' skate before beating Fucali. And what looked like a very simple play as it was dumped in, uh, turns out to be a goal for Ramuski and a very important one in that to give them some confidence and give them the lead here in period two. Would have been difficult for Fucali to miss that celebration. <laughs> Great was broke. There's a penalty coming up. By the reaction of the crowd, easy to tell what team's getting it. Matt Murphy's heading to the penalty box. And he's saying it wasn't him. Now it appears Timashov's going to be the guy. That's what friends are for. <laughs> well, Timashov, who was the leading rookie scorer in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League this year, did not play particularly well in the first two games of this series. And you see him getting the stick up into the grill of Luca. That sends him to the box, but Timoshoff with his assist in this game. Looks as if he's back on track. He's been in the mix on a couple of occasions. Now he has to watch. Ramuski has a chance to get a two-goal lead. Bork. Pass over to DeLuca, and he is a sniper. Put it right on. Fucali was over quickly to make that stop. Well, you heard Damien uh, talk about it at the intermission, that Zach Fucali didn't actually start the first three games of the playoffs against Cape Breton, but in game four he came in. He just closed the door, not very well, but enough to get the job done. And from there, he's been on an 11-game win streak. And so Fucali looking much more like the 2013 Fucali. Moran, wrist shot. That's blocked by Echegaray. Bork takes a look. Moran over to DeLuca. He heads to the blue line. Bork wraps it around. Moran will come up with it on the right wing side. Everything to the outside right now for Ramuski. Deluca, a quick glimpse at the net. There's a lane. Got it through. Fucali the save. Puck loose, and it winds up in the corner. Deluca. Back to Moran, who is tapping his stick. A penalty is coming up. Adam Ernie's stick was knocked out of his hands. And that will do it for the power play. Well, Ernie's had that stick uh, be part of the action on a couple of occasions earlier in the period, cutting through the middle of the ice, had a stick break as he was about to take a shot. And here he has it knocked out of his hands. And that results in a penalty, nullifying the Ramuski power play. So Ernie doing whatever he can without the stick to try and help out here on the PK. And he's looking and saying, hey, he can't do that. Four on four, Clapperton trying to speed into the Quebec zone, but both Murphy and Brouillard were back there. Baudouin sends it to the corner. Gauthier trying to get in there and help out Clapperton. Gauthier did get it. Found Baudouin. His shot is off Duclair. Gauthier can't get to the puck in front of the net. Now Duclair has poked it out to center. It's a foot race. Moran with that long reach. Six foot seven. He got there first. Can't control. Carotz is on it. Made a pass to Duclair. Looks at the blue line, but the defenseman Murphy was covered by Clapperton, and the puck comes all the way back to the Rampart zone. Well, it must be nice to have that size. Six foot seven, four strides to Duclair's ten to get to the same space at the same time. Brouillard going coast to coast, and he put it too high when he finally did get the shot away. Michael Jolie, he's had a lot of opportunities in this game. Will he get another one on this rush? Circles the net. Makes a pass wide open as McSween missed the net with a shot. Loiza takes a wraparound try. Fucali was down. He had everything low blocked. Pass comes to the line. McSween can't keep it in. Kostelek backs away from trouble. Out of the penalty box is Timashak. Jolie will head down low. This is a power play right now for the Ramparts. McSween loses it at the line but gets it right back into the Quebec end. Really picking up here in the second period, and Ramuski starting to flex his muscle a little bit. Abbreviated power play for Quebec. 
Team is shot. Can't come up with a punch in front. Back to the line. Graves, speaking of long reach, he used it there. There's a shot, though, but it's wide. Timashov comes up with it. Ten seconds to go in the power play. Vladimir Kachev to Timashov. Kachev, shot, saved by Gandol. Or maybe it was Paul Gwynn, the two former Drummondville Bulls. He sure got in front of it. Kachev another try. That time, no doubt about it, Gandol made the save. Kachev again, gets to the middle. Drops off a pass. The penalty's over. Back to five on five. And some big saves made. Another penalty coming up to Quebec. Couture working his way in. Goche was knocked down, maintained possession of the puck. A delayed penalty here, and that puck bounced dangerously in front of the Quebec net. Gandol is on the bench. The extra attacker is out there. Delayed penalty coming. Frederick Goche goes to the blue line. Kostelik, cross ice. There's a shot that's blocked aside by Fukali. Kachev touches the puck, gets the whistle. And Timoshov is back to the penalty box. A power play for Ramuski coming up when we return. To create a most flavorful sandwich, we begin with our signature bread. Extra lean grilled and seasoned chicken strips with no preservatives. Add your favorite cheese, your choice of fresh veggies, creamy avocado, and enough flavors to make it your own. Made right in front of you. Tastes unite in a fresh toasted sandwich like no other. Try any of Subway's sandwiches made with grilled and seasoned chicken strips and find out why they're a cut above the rest. Subway. Eat fresh. We are born makers. We make things that are there when you need them most. Things that help you avoid an accident. Before it ever happens. Things worthy of the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. The industry's highest safety accolade. The all-new Chrysler 200. So what about that stock? Sure thing, right? Actually, knowing the kind of risk that you're comfortable with, I'd steer clear. Really? Really. Straight talk. Now, based on your strategy, I do have some other thoughts. Okay, it's a big here. deal, and it's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Behind the Ramuski event from Serge Beausoleil, already one goal up. You told us before the game you wanted your team to play to its level. Are you seeing that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good start for us, and we have to keep going. It's is this one of those things you told us you wanted them to be physical? Use the size. And we started to see that right from the opening faceoff. Yeah, physically we can we, we can have an advantage in this game and we have to use it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Serge Beausoleil, a lot of confidence in his team, and he should have confidence. They had plenty of injuries, but still managed to finish first in the regular season in the QMJHL, attempting to become the 26th team to the regular season champs and President Cup champs. They need this one today, though. Down in the series, two games tonight. Power play. That attempt by Clapperton. Didn't get much on it, and it's an easy clear by Mahou. So important here for Muski. Down 0-2 in the series. We've got a chance to extend that lead here to two goals in this game. And really get that confidence back that I think took a beating in those two losses at home in Ramuski against Quebec to start the series. Beausoleil did mention before the game that with losses, you tend to learn more, and players pay just a little more attention to the coaching staff. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, you looked at an optional skate for Quebec yesterday. Everyone was loosey-goosey, having fun, not a whole lot of teaching going on. Just, hey, just keep on keeping on. And for Ramuski, you really had to take those two losses to hard practice before they came here. Duclair, first man on this puck, shorthanded, didn't matter to him, almost got it in front. Right back the other way is Jolie. He's skating well. Gets to the dot in the face-on circle. Moves it back to Bork. Moran takes the shot. Carozza was willing to block it from long range. Moran to DeLuca. Bork back to Moran. There's a shot. That's nowhere near the net, but it winds up on the stick of LeBaire. Moran, oh boy. That was blocked by Duclair. It looked like it was off the inside of the foot, but he's showing no ill effects as he heads to the bench. The best player selling out. That's a good sign for the Rampart. DeLuca into the corner to LeBaire. 
LaBerge being credited with the go-ahead goal right now for the Ocean. DeLuca, hard pass. That's off the stick of Graves and goes over the glass. They're just trying to force things right now with that pass. Ramuski uh, working down low. Short passes, try and create an odd man situation and get a shot on goal. And a couple of times on the entry, been a little sloppy here. Just inside the blue line, it gets turned over. Pass off the skate. Can't get in past the blue line on this occasion. And how about this third try? Same sort of thing. No speed through the neutral zone. DeLuca and Kostelik. Back and forth they go, and that's broken up just inside the line. A good job there by the Ramparts on the kill to deny entrance into the zone by Ramos. 20 seconds to go on this power play. Gauthier comes out to take the face off. And he is out against Kurt Echegarry. And Echegarry wins the defensive zone draw. Not cleared. Ford kept it in with his glove. Took a shot, but that missed the net. Wrapped around again. Moran kicked the leg out. And he couldn't make the kick save to keep the pressure on. Well, RJ, you know, coming back to this building, you're really reminded of just how lively those boards are. And every time you see a goaltender go out to challenge, if that shot goes wide, he has to recover quickly back to his post. There will be a learning curve for the OHL and WHL champions here at La Colisee. Ramuski and Quebec, they play eight times in the regular season. Here in the President's Cup Final, they're both familiar with this building. Goche, in pass, doesn't find any teammates, Broyard. He hustles, takes a shot, but that's why to the goal, Team shot. Spinning away, Goche didn't give him any room. Loaiza, he's got some room. There's a shot, and a save by Fucali. He trapped it against his right arm and gets the whistle. You see, it's one of those rare shifts for Giancarlo Fiore, and what looks like an odd man rush, Loizo is as dangerous as player as Ramuski has. This is given all kinds of room. There's Fiore, he's looking to his left, but Loizo cuts that back into the middle of the ice. And Fukali solely puck focused, not even worried about the pass, not worried about anybody else. And makes an excellent stop. And Fukali really showing his wares here for the Ramparts. Ramuski starting to pour it on a bit. Vachon over to Couture. Reverses it down low. Now the Oceanic are working the cycle. Lapine comes up with it. Short pass. That gets to Vashon. Pick those open at the point. He goes over to McSween. That shot's off a leg. Comes bouncing around. Fucali was quick to react to make sure it didn't come right in front of his neck. McDougal lost sight of it, and now the cycle continues for Ramuski. Pico comes down from his defense position. Keeps Quebec under some stress here. Vachon digs it loose. Moody wraps it around. Took a funny hop off the glass. Couture shot wide of the goal. Off the boards, finally clear. Marcus Cuomo trying to work his way into the Ramuski zone. Cuomo threw a hit. We were able to hear him talk yesterday in the trainer's room. Missed 13 games due to injury. Been dying to get back in the lineup. Kept telling. The Ramparts trainer that he's good to go. He is in the lineup. Crowd reacts to another Ramparts player that has fallen. They thought there should have been a penalty. Carozza goes to Bruyard. Tried to move it in front of the net. Carozza gets it again. He can't get it on goal. The Bears works up ice. He'll send it to the corner. Murphy, double team down there. Down catch have though. Makes a light pass to center ice. It's on the stick of Jerome Barrier. Catch him. He goes cross ice. Nobody over there. Barrier was battling in front of the net with Moran, who's complaining to the referee now. Boy, they're really doing a good job getting under the skin of Moran. You've seen him extend his arms a couple of times looking for calls he's taking the odd slash going back to the benches the benches are so close together here really trying to keep him off his gate adam ernie finishes a check on moran now the puck's turned over duclair picked it off takes a shot but that's blocked by moran ernie tried to chip it in front both wayne didn't allow that to happen back to graves his shot that was off the leg and went wide goalie races for it but mahu's able to keep it in Quebec trying to get something on goal. Ramuski not letting it happen. Duclair in front of the net. Moran comes up with it. Gets it safely over the boards. Not quite out yet, though. Now it's chipped to the line by Moran. 
Duclair with a steal. Moran's tired. Duclair trying to go wide. Loses it in the corner. Moran comes up with it. Makes a pass to Jolie. DeLuca hates to the net. Jolie makes a good move. Comes in. Puck is in the net. Bukele got a piece of it. And Jolie scores. And Ramuski goes up by two in this game. What a wicked move by Jolie. And here's a guy who's got a lot of skill. We talked about him being a point per game, better than a point per game producer over the last two years. Watch this drag here. He gets Mahu to bite. Mahu is now completely out of the play. Jolie takes it into the middle of the ice. Fukali gets a piece of it, and it just trickles, and I mean barely trickles past the line. DeLuc is there trying to battle against Graves. And because DeLuca did so, he doesn't allow Graves to backhand that puck away from the goal, and Jolie picks up the marker. Excellent move by Jolie. Completely undressing Mahu. And Ramuski now starting to extend. For Jolie, that's his fourth goal of this series. Hat trick in game one, shut out in game two, and comes up with a big goal here in game three. Loizo makes a hard pass to Clapperton. Ramuski looking for a little more. Still seven minutes to go in this second period. The goals in the frame. And Ramuski up by two. Murphy, the defenseman. Jumps into the play. He runs out of real estate, still maintains possession, goes back to the line. There's a shot. Gandol's looking for it. A chance for Gauthier. All kinds of bodies. Another chance for Gauthier. And Gandol was down low, made a fine save. Lamuski needed to get the puck out. They were on their heels, and they iced him. Michael Jolie. A big goal for the Ramuski Oceanic. That gives them a 3-1 lead here in the second period. Arctic Spas. Engineered for your family. Tim Horton's Dark Roast Coffee. A brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich, full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. Travel Lodge is where hardcore fans stay. Where hockey moms stay. Where mascots stay. <laughs> where hosers stay. <laughs> and where hockey stays. We salute those who live hockey. Make a great save at wherehockeystays.com. Arctic Spas, engineered for your family. Let's call our CHL Roots alumni, like father, like son. Philippe Boucher, the head coach of the Remparts, played for the Granby Bisons and Laval. And over his career, you can see how he fared as a defenseman before he was drafted by Buffalo. Went on to play with L.A., Dallas, and Pittsburgh and spent 748 games at the National Hockey League. His son, Matthew, got two games with Blanville last year, played 63 with Drummondville this year, eight goals and eight assists. But the only difference is he's a left winger, not a D-man like his dad. CHL Roots is brought to you by Boston Pizza. Order from over 100 menu items at bostonpizza.com for delivery. His dad was a left winger half the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't afraid to create some offense. 300 points in those 748 games in the NHL. Adam Ernie. He's on a goal-scoring tear. 17 games, 17 goals in this postseason. Hasn't generated much in this game. Ramuski's kept goals tabs on this top line of the Ramparts. As a result, Oceanic are up by two here in the second period. Frederick Gauthier, first round pick of the Maple Leafs. Short pass, there's Clapperton. Always in the middle of things. Just took a shot on goal. Made sure Fugali was paying attention. Easy save for Zach Fugali. Well, Ramuski trying to display that physical style, trying to use their size to their advantage, and they've done that. Even guys like Costa, like you see him going up against Verrier into the middle of the ice on the continuation, knocks him down. He's pretty proud of himself there. And Costa, who is a draft pick of the Winnipeg Jets, one of the many that they have on the way, is leading Ramuski with a plus 12 so far in the playoffs. 
Bucks plus 55 in the regular season. That led his team, so he is a steady defender that can contribute to offense. 43 points in the regular season. Shots really starting to heavily favor Ramuski. 21 to 13 in the game. They're looking to get a few more. There was a shot through a screen. Fucali didn't move. Como falls down, couldn't get the puck up. Fucali gets on it in a hurry. Behind his own goal is Ross McDougall from St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Up to Yannick Turcott. He couldn't get much past center. William Couture kicks it back into the Quebec end. McDougall goes to the corner, but it's Lapine who has it. McDougall takes it away from him. Turcott. Hanging away at it, it stays inside the Rampart's hand. Couture, Lapine, finally knocked away from McDougal. Turcott passes over to Cuomo, takes a hit in front of his own bench. Got the puck in, Ramuski moves it out to center quickly. That pass knocked down by Barrier. He can't control through the middle of the ice. Murphy, he'll have to hurry. Didn't realize St. Hilaire was right on him. Back to Baudouin. Takes the shot, and just as St. Hilaire was going to the front of the net, it hit him and didn't get through to Ficali. He makes a pass to LaBerge. Now it's behind the net. That's where Bolin comes up with it. He goes to the line to Moran. Baudouin shoots again. This time it's off the end boards. LaBerge spin and fire. Ficali got over in time. To the line again, and Moran, he was daring as he held the line. Poked the puck, kept it in. McDougal rips it around and got it over Moran this time. It's icing against the Ramparts, though. 4-16 remaining in the second period. It's been a good period for Ramuski. They lead by two. Stay two separate times and earn a $50 Best Western gift card and use it here this summer. Or here. And even here. And when you stay, enjoy breakfast and free high-speed internet. Book now at bestwestern.com. Tim Hortons Dark Roast Coffee, a brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. Before you get in, get going, get gone. You need to get a tire that gets you. A tire like Cooper's revolutionary new CS5 with premium touring innovations for the way real drivers really drive. That's real life performance. Because life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Zach Vicali, second round pick of the Montreal Canadiens in the 2013 draft. You see Guy Lafleur on the side of his helmet and 48 career playoff victories. That's tops all time. How about Philip Cataret, the Bacomo Dracar, who's had a couple of good runs with his hockey club the last years. And then we go back into guys a little bit older, starting with Roberto Luongo. But Fucali uh, has got a wonderful resume. A guy who they talked about maybe trading from the Montreal Canadiens organization earlier this year. It didn't happen. He's got a gold medal. He's got a Master Car Memorial Cup. And he'd love to add another President's Cup title to his trophy case. Well, you know who the number one goalie for the foreseeable future is in Montreal. So it might be a piece down the road that Montreal can use or continue to develop through Cali. If all goes well for him and his ramparts, a couple more wins, he'll have 50 career playoff wins in his QMJHL career. Cali able to shield the puck from Jolie. Moves it ahead to the left wing side. Kadchev muscled to the ice by DeLuca. Kostelik controls, moves it back to Charles David Baudouin. Kostelik. Pass into the middle. That's picked up by Anthony Shabato. DeLuca snaps a shot. Boy, can he fire it. That got up high on Fucali. He knocked it down. That's all he could do. Kostelik long range. Walker to side by Fucali. There's Goche. He fires one on two. And Fucali bank and forth in his net. Stopping it all. Well, he's got Clapperton buzzing around, and you can see Fucali. He took a couple of whacks at Clapperton. Really, he's normally just a reserved guy. He has to come up big with the blocker save there. DeLuca chases it down, forced to come up with another save on Kostlik. And as the rebounds would continue, you can see the Remparts standing still and Ramuski attacking to find second and third chances. 
Echegaray, ejected from the faceoff circle, so now Goche will go up against Adam Ernie. And a predictable result, clean win. Loizzo hit his own man Goche with a shot. Cross to lick down low, Clafferton had it bounce over his stick. Or forced to back off, he knew the speedy Duclair was on the right wing side. Clafferton, sharp angle, he was looking short side, went a little too high though. Rafael Mahu has to be careful. Clapperton picks his pocket. Christopher Clapperton circling the net. Takes a shot, and that was off the post. Continues to buzz Clapperton. Fifth round pick of Florida a couple of years ago. Not stopping. He's got it again. There's a pass in front. Gauthier reached for it, but too many ramparts were in front. They finally clear it. There's Clapperton, though. He's got to be exhausted. Oh, he's everywhere. Now he's up at center. Gauthier. Works his way through the middle. Clapperton will stay out there. Go chase through everybody. Put it off the side of the net. Just ran out of room. Sam Moran comes up with a puck in front of his own net. Nash on at center ice. He has to deal with Mahu. Knocks him down. Mahu pins it along the board. Fashion like a bulldog down there. Continues to push for it. Braves chases after it, but the Oceanic were offside. You know, after that clean win for Ramuski, they're able to maintain possession in the offensive zone. It's Christopher Clapperton, number 57, who's all over the joint. Here he spins around. He gets a lot on this shot and ends up going off the post. And then Goche has a wonderful opportunity. You know, Todd Warner talked about off the top of the broadcast. He's not likely to ever be a goal scorer, but I tell you, in this game, he's had three or four grade A chances. Just hasn't been able to finish them off here, but he's done a good job in the circle, really good job for Ramuski on the penalty kill. And oftentimes when you look at goal scoring as being your sole indicator of how good a player's been, you have to look deeper than that for Gochi. Long shot on Pukali. Oceanic appear to be putting everything on goal right now. Look at Moran. Dealt with two ramparts. Timashov and Garno made a pass to his defense partner Baudouin and released him safely out of their end. Hard hit at that Quebec line. Murphy through the check. Garno loses it. There's Jean. Couldn't stick handle his way to the net. Now Timashov gets punched over there. Lapine and Vachon. Murphy passes to Brouillard. His pass hits the stick of Bolin. Quebec doesn't get it into the Ramuski zone. Shots are now 26 to 13. Twice as many shots on goal for the Oceanic in this game. And they lead by two with just over a minute to go in the second period. Getting a glimpse of why yeah, Ramuski yeah, yeah, was the number one team in the regular season in the QMJHL. They have to play desperate today. Down in the series, two games to none. St. Hilaire, he takes a hit. Puck stays down there, though. LaBerge bumps with Echegaray, Duclair. He couldn't get far. Boland was in his face. Kostelik at center. He'll wrap it around along the dasher board. LaBerge gets it in his skates. Echegaray ahead to Duclair, but LaBerge isn't letting him out of his sights. Ryan Graves, short pass ahead to Adam Ernie. Ernie will dump it in. Gandon was able to reach that. Played it just in time as Echegaray, the captain of the Ramparts, was in the vicinity. And we got a fight behind the play. Ernie's dropped the gloves with Charles David Baudouin. And they're tied up right now. Neither one able to get loose. Baudouin got a quick right in there. Ernie tries to get a right. Another right from Baudouin. And Adam Ernie, usually using his hands to score goals, has had enough. He dropped the gloves with Baudouin. And that's all for this scrap. Linesman get in there. And Ernie and Baudouin will be off the ice for a while. In a game where Quebec needs goals, they'll need Adam Ernie in this third period. Well, you know, Ernie trying to provide a spark in another where he, the alternate captain here, you can see he wastes no time dropping the glove. Baudouin wasn't exactly looking for this thing to start the way it did. But if you're Philippe Boucher, I don't know if you want that trade off. I mean, Baudouin goes off. You have Ernie off, 17 goals, as you mentioned, RJ, second in all the Canadian Hockey League and goal scored throughout the playoffs. I think Serge Beausoleil would gladly take that exchange any day of the week. And a smirk, it appears, on the face of Serge Beausoleil. 
And the two captains, Loizo and Echegarry, yeah, having they, a lot of words. They, and you know, the way this building is set up, RJ, the benches are so close to one another that when guys are going back for line changes or when uh, there's anything that happens uh, near the benches, you can see just how close they are. And the fact of the matter is the chirping continues, the little stick whacking continues, and even if you go to the near side on either one of the two benches, you can still get a shot in there. And in fact, you can almost get next to the opposition if you really wanted to without the trainers just stepping in to interfere. That puck lofted into the Quebec zone. Fukali came out to play it, or cover it rather. And Brouillard went down. He might have got a high stick here. Yeah, it looks like Clapperton's going to be escorted. Yard went down. He was hogtied at the end of the play. And we talked about Clapperton having the play on edge. And we've seen the good and the bad. A couple of bad penalties in this game. But we saw two shifts ago where he was all over the ice and got a couple of shots on goal. It was a cross check to the back and then to the face. I mean, I'm not sure how you would argue that. You throw your hands in the air. That's not one cross check in the back, but then one on the chops as well. And so Clapperton, you know, goes to the box here with 3.1 seconds left in this period. Not much time to work for the Ramparts in this period, as Sam mentioned. Off the face off, Royard tried to shovel it at the net. He missed. And we're starting to see why these two teams are rivals. Game three of this series. 11th meeting of the season. Ramuski, they needed a strong period. They got it in the second, and they have a lead here in game three, Jeff. Oh, yeah, guys, nothing to play for. Both teams are tucked away, both going to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. They'll just Why go did you say through all the those motions. Things? Why did you say that? I've been things? saying it from day one. There's plenty of that. that QMJHL President's Cup yeah. is a big deal for both these two teams. And when you look at Ramuski, okay, think of the mentality of Ramuski right now. They lose two games at home, and then they're mm -hmm. coming to Quebec. Some teams might just say, well, we're already going to the Memorial Cup. Right. Let's just go and take a spoonful of medicine. We know we're going to be there at the end of the month, but to quote Dylan Thomas, your favorite poet, they're not yes. going gentle into that good night. No, and, but I'll tell you, though, that when they were down one nothing in the first period, they were not looking very good yeah. at all. Nope. And I think Quebec let them back into this game. Quebec had a real opportunity to really put the hammer down, and then they took a bad penalty, and then they gave up a goal, and all of a sudden, Ramuski said, oh, we, we feel kind of good about ourselves, and they started looking like Ramuski again in the second period. Never give a team a chance to get back in a series, especially for Quebec. They had a chance to take a stranglehold on this series, and it was undisciplined play. We started to cover it after the first intermission tonight, and silly penalties allowed Ramuski to get some life, gain some traction, and now they feel good. They feel like they're back in this series. Like what, what's Anthony and, Duclair doing? Yeah, Two-hander behind then the play. The goalie. Very yeah, he, he just blatantly runs Gindal, and then that's an Aaron Height stick by some of the best players on this team, too. So that's yeah. not smart, that's undisciplined, and that's allowed Ramuski to gain some traction, feel confident again, and feel like they're part of the series. So I saw something in that period that I still don't believe <laughs> I saw. You were watching the game again. Yes. And you know what that was? <laughs> I saw Frederick Goche take the puck at one end of the ice and yeah. take it all the way to the... Now, you talked about you know, the face-offs and the penalty killing, and that's going to be the calling card to Freddie Goche, but... Do we maybe short sell this Leafs prospect well, a little bit? I, I, you know, and Todd's going to talk about his skating because Todd knows something about skating. We, we all agree with Battle that. Battle the Blades. Figure yeah, skating. I mean, but yeah, yeah Battle of the Blades. <laughs> <laughs> they, but, I mean, Frederick Goche's had a pretty good game here. I mean, he's a guy who's a lot of criticism because he doesn't score. He still hasn't scored, but, boy, he's created chances. And he is, a, you know, he's a big guy, but, boy, he moves out there, and he does a number of things. He takes face off. We know that from the World Juniors. Very successful at taking draws. He was able to, you know, draw a penalty, do something else. And then late in the period, boy, as you said, Jeff, we were all kind of taken aback by when he took the puck and goes just sort of end to end. Now, Todd, you've had a couple of periods now to watch him. He's been criticized for his feet and for his skating. What do you think of his skating? It, it, Could it's a he project. make it on Battle of the Blade? Uh, not right away. <laughs> not right away. But Barb Underhill will work with this young man, yeah. and he's got a bright future, I think. But, you know, he does a lot of things well, like good stick, um, you know, smart face-off, block shots, all those things. He's a good positional player. It'd be easy to play with him. But he skates pretty well, too. For, you forget 6'5", 220. I mean, that's carrying a lot of weight for, for a young man. So he has good technique. 
he's a good skater, and so he'll work with Barb, and I'm sure he'll improve his foot speed to get yeah. to the next level. I mean, That'll he's not difference. clumsy. Okay. He's not. He's not. He laterally moves well. He's smooth. So just the, the first step, like you talked about with, with Connor McDavid, that first few strides is what's going to get him to the next level. Yeah. He was a lumbering skater. When he was first drafted, yeah. I can remember specifically, that sure. draft was in New Jersey. The Maple Leafs uh, selected Frederick Goche, and the first thing people said was, he is a project, he is raw, he is a lumbering skater, and it's going to be right. well before and, he and, and, you know, when you see Burakovsky make it to the Capitals already and score a goal in a Stanley Cup playoff game, Two. it's easy for people to look at the Leafs and say, why were they taking Goche? Different administration, different philosophy, mm -hmm. but again, you have to look at the bigger picture, and, and we'll see over time. After two or three years in the minors, I would yeah. imagine whether Frederick Goche can use you know the minor leagues to become an NHL player. Quick thought, players' perspective on this one: You have Ramuski, you have Quebec, both. Are, but this is one half of the Mastercard Memorial Cup, essentially. How much? And we saw a scrap at the end of the period. How much of this is going to be? Let's get in a little extra lick here. Let's get mm -hmm. in a little scrap. Let's get in a little punch. Let's get in a little poke behind the knees. It's going to carry over into the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Well, it all helps, and we saw Adam Ernie there at the end of that first period. Here's, the, here's their leading goal scorer get involved physically, trying to send a message, trying to gain some kind of momentum, whatever they can do. So, uh, you know, this gonna, it's going to be a, a long series, it would appear. I think that Quebec's let them back in this series, but based on the, that finish of the period, I think Adam Ernie's trying to inspire his team in I, some way. Oh, and I remember back in, I think, 2011, Mississauga was hosting the Memorial yeah, guess, Cup, and they played Owen Sound right, in right. the OHL final, and it was a heck of a battle. And it was renewed again when they met again in the MasterCard Memorial Cup. So, yeah, I think you're right. This is part of a process. Both those teams know they're going to be there. But they're, you know, it's, they're thinking about that already. Owen Sound won the Robertson Cup in that one. Okay, meanwhile, our game 3-1 to one for Ramuski. Series 2-0 Quebec, but don't tell the Oceanic that they have the lead. Sportsnet and Hockey Night in Canada, home of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Visit sportsnet.ca for matchups, channel listings, and start times. Find your game on Sportsnet. Wendy's new jalapeno fresco spicy chicken is so deliciously hot, it's generating reactions from everyone, like the memer. Ooh, needs spicy goodness like a boss. The selfiers. They're good. Gotta get a selfie. So hot, got a selfie or selfie. And the behind the times are. Mm, this sandwich is the bomb. Raise the roof! Wendy's new jalapeno fresco, our signature spicy seasoned chicken. Topped with fresh jalapenos and ghost pepper sauce. How will you react? <laughs> Needs your sweat. Whether you're shadowing the fastest skater on the ice, finishing a check, or taking the final shot. If you want to win, you better leave everything on the ice. Especially your sweat. Because nobody is going to hand you victory. It's earned with every drop. Gatorade helps replace what you sweat out. Are you satisfied? There's nowhere to go! The Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight on CBC. With New York staring down elimination. Senses shocking, opportunities fleeing, and the season slipping away. Everything changed in a New York minute. Crowder has tied the game! And sudden death resuscitated life. And the Rangers are still alive! Rangers Capitals Game 6 tonight on CBC and Rogers NHL Game Center Live. All right, big night on the horizon, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific on sports that you can watch Hockey Central. Getting you set for a couple of games, Rangers look to stave off elimination against the Washington Capitals. That one on CBC at 7. Hockey Central again, 9.30, getting you primed for the Ducks and the Flames. Say it ain't so, Flames back up against the wall. Anaheim leads the series 3-1, 10 o'clock Eastern. You can watch that one on Sportsnet. Watch all of the action on Rogers Game Center Live. Time now for the play of the second period brought to you by Stag Chili Saves for Success program where saves made will result in contributions up to $30,000 to minor hockey teams. Visit stagchili.ca for details. T. Warner, what do you have? A beauty by Michael Jolie down the wing, sells the shot, toe drag. Kelly gets a piece of it, but not enough. Jolie, big goal, toe drag, shelf. The Stag Chili play of the period. Drags his spoon Ooh. through a bowl of stag chili, tucks it 
I don't know. I'll stop now. Would <laughs> you two knock it off? Come on, trying to work a theme here. It's called extended him. metaphor, Damien. Three one to Mooski. <laughs> Sportsnet Central has comprehensive post-game coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs, plus the latest on the Blue Jays and NBA playoffs. Sportsnet Central, every night. Get behind the wheel, and it all comes together. Power to accelerate and exhilarate. Squeezing every last kilometer out of every last liter. A ride that adapts to any surface. Safety features so advanced, it was awarded the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Sometimes, things really do add up. The all-new 2015 Chrysler 200. I'm a bit of a puck hog. Hey! Hey! Hey, the fellas don't love my game, so to get back on speaking terms, I buy them the new Wings 2-4 Boston Pizza. It makes up for all the passes I didn't give them. Hi, Tom. Hey, how's the college visit? You remember it. It's good. Does it make the short list? You remember that too. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Knowing our clients personally is what we do. It's okay. This is what we've been planning for. Thanks. Bye. Edward Jones is the big company that doesn't act that way. There is an old Jamaican saying, the older the moon, the brighter it shines. At the Appleton Estate, we are Rome people. Introducing new dry spray antiperspirant from Dove Men Plus Care. With 48 hour sweat protection plus a non-irritant formula that goes on instantly dry. New dry spray, tough on sweat, not on skin. Now instantly dry. Tim Horton's Dark Roast Coffee, a brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. You've always played. Played alone. Played in key. You played strings and played the hero. And sold your stuff on Kijiji so you could move up a level. Today you play offline, online, and in line, you play hardball. And sometimes, you even play for broke. As life leads you from one thing to another, Kijiji is the easy way to buy and sell great stuff in your community. Kijiji, Canada's largest classified site. The Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight on Sportsnet. Comeback set in the calling card for Calgary all season long. There's another comeback in the cards. Ducks Flames Game 5 tonight on Sportsnet and Rogers NHL Game Center Live. Find your game at sportsnet.ca slash schedule. Man, do I love that song. Time now for Road Warriors, brought to you by Cooper Tires. Cooper builds tires for the way real drivers really drive. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Have a look at these stats. Road Warriors, that is who the Ramusi Oceanic are indeed. 7-0 and on the road, the only undefeated team on the road in the CHL playoffs. Goals per game, just under five. Goals against, just over one. That looks good on Louis-Philippe Guindon and Philippe de Rocher, the two net miners for Ramouski, the top team in the QMJHL in the regular season. Back here at the CHL on Sportsnet Studio, Jeff Merrick alongside Damian Cox and Todd Warner. Austin Matthews, you talked about this last night on Hockey Night. Austin Matthews may not be draft eligible. He may go number one next year in 2016, although Jacob Trickman of Sarnia may have something to say about that. But he's making headlines. Is he going NCAA? Is he going to Everett of the Western Hockey League? Or is he going to Switzerland, Damien? What's the latest? Yeah, well, he was at the World Under 18s in Switzerland, and then he almost, or he went with the uh, with the Team USA to the World Championships, and they wanted him to stay, but he had to come back to North America because he had homework to do. Uh, he's only in grade 11, and he's trying to keep the option of NCAA open, and it's either that, maybe University of Denver, maybe Michigan. And we know that Everett owns his rights of the Western Hockey League, but while he was overseas. A number of Swiss teams had a look at him and came to try to talk to him and are apparently interested enough that they have contacted his representatives and talked about making offers to him. The idea being instead of playing one year in Everett or one year in NCAA, 
he would play one year in the Swiss Elite League. Maybe they bring back Todd Warner to play with him. Not but, likely. Uh, Not you likely. know, <laughs> and the idea being, I guess, if you play for in Zurich for Mark yeah. Crawford, you're yep. playing for an NHL coach against men. And as a development tool, I mean, it's an interesting idea. I still wonder if it'll happen, but certainly he's got three bona fide options right now. But there was a report earlier on that said he had already signed not the true. team in Swiss, Switzerland. Not, not true. true. Not true that he has signed with Zurich, but certainly it is, I'm told, a viable option. His agents are, or representatives, or what are they called? Family advisors. Family yeah. advisors. Uh, yes. American are NCAA. Investigating they, don't, the, yeah. Yeah, they, they don't have agents. No. no family. No. Oh, it's the same business card. It's bizarre. <laughs> one says agent, one says. Anyway, Ramoski up 3 to 1, third period on the horizon. For inside the Stanley Cup playoffs with hockey's best, Hockey Central pregame every night on Sportsnet. Get behind the wheel, and it all comes together. Power to accelerate and exhilarate, squeezing every last kilometer out of every last liter. A ride that adapts to any surface. Safety features so advanced. It was awarded the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Sometimes, things really do add up. The all-new 2015 Chrysler 200. Ghosts usually appear as harmless apparitions. What you have, it's another level. It moves objects, causes hallucinations, <laughs> and violent attacks. Mommy? Something's wrong. It's a poltergeist. They know what scares you. Hey. Yes? Poltergeist. There is an old Jamaican saying. The older the moon, the brighter it shines. At the Appleton Estate, we are Rome people. shopping to shopping online. No credit card is more accepted than MasterCard. Because turning the everyday into days that change everything is priceless. Preferred card wherever PC products are sold. Daniel? Oh, Nana, another cat video? <laughs> no, no. I'm using Auto Trader to compare this fully loaded 4x4 and a killer matte black V8. Uh, on purpose? The 4x4 has a tech package and a warranty. But the matte black is just so tight. Plus, the price is right compared to other listings. I'm going with matte black. Okay. Anyone can buy and sell like a pro with autotrader.ca. Tim Horton's Dark Roast Coffee, a brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. The MasterCard Memorial Cup will be right here in Quebec City and it begins in just 12 days. It will be the WHL champs, Brandon or Kelowna Rockets lead that series Two games to none against the Quebec Ramparts. That'll be on Sportsnet East Ontario, West and Pacific at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on Friday, May 22nd. This is the President's Cup Final. Rob is with the royalty of the QMJHL. Rob? RJM with Gilles Courteau, the Commissioner of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. We had a little press conference before this game talking about the history of this building and the fact that the MasterCard Memorial Cup will be the last major sporting event here. Yeah, exactly, Rob. That's going to be a great event, the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Right now, you know, both teams, Rimouche and Quebec, they're going through uh, our last President Cup in the Quebec uh, Pepsi Colisee. That's going to be uh, remarkable for them because they'll be part of the history. That's going to be the same thing with uh, the uh, upcoming MasterCard Memorial Cup. When we look to, and this crowd is electric, when you get it full and knowing that you've got the energy and, of course, the animosity between these two franchises, this building will be electric. Yeah, big time, because uh, between Rimouski and Quebec, it's a big rivalry. Uh, you know, we know that uh, it's past history, and, uh, you know, they're uh, pay playing with so so much emotion, and that's going to be the same with uh, the winner of the OHL and winner of the Westlake League. 
I'm sure that everybody who's going to come here in the uh, Pepsi Colossi is going to have a great event uh, coming uh, for the National Commonwealth Cup. Great to see you. We look forward to seeing you in about a week and a half. Same here, Rob. Gilles Torteau, he is the commissioner of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He's fired us up about us coming, and so are we. RJ Sam, call of the third period. Quebec Ramparts, they want to be President's Cup champions. Lead this series two games to none, but they trail in this game three to one. They're on a power play right now to start the third. This would be big for the Ramparts to get an early goal in the third period and creep to within one. Catch it. He goes to the back door. A timing play. Gauthier got there, but couldn't fire on goal. Pass into the middle. Duclair takes it in his skates. Huck not quite out. It's bouncing there. Bort gets it up ahead to Jolie. He's working one on one against Brouillard. Took a shot. Not much on it. Brouillard made sure it didn't get through to his goaltender, Zank Kukali. Well, Jolie's had an excellent game here for Ramuski, arguably their best player in this contest went to camp with Buffalo this year so still some pro prospects for Julie under a minute to go in this power play Vladimir Kachev the import from Russia makes a pass to Bruyar Duclair into the middle Tima shot can't shoot Kachev does and the lead Philippe Gandol got over in plenty of time to make the save Tima shot but really dangerous there playing in that high slot area and He's able to not only shoot pucks from there, but distribute, which he's done so well this year. Good job keeping it in at the line. Duclair to the middle of the ice. And now Timoshov, he's covered. He passes. If he's not, he shoots. That time he was covered. Kachev on the one-timer can't get it to go. Face-off win for Frederick Oche, and Ramuski gets it down the ice. Duclair leaves it for Brouillard. Nikola Brouillard takes a quick glance up at the clock. Knew there wasn't a lot of time on this power play. Team couldn't get it inside the Ramuski end. Good smart play by Goche. Just kind of hovering horizontally along the line now. Able to force a pass and then get it down the next. Kachev, he can be crafty. Puck bouncing around. An alert play by Kostelik. Maybe some soccer background. He's from the Czech Republic. Used the foot to kick that puck out of harm's way as Kachev is looking dangerous coming down the middle. Broyard, he takes a shot, that gets through to Gandol, and he absorbs another one and hangs on as the traffic approaches. Well, it's been a big game for Gandol to bounce back here for Ramuski. We talked about in the first two games that they had switched goaltenders. Gandol started game number one. He was yanked after 24 minutes. Philippe de Rocher started game two. He was yanked at 13 and a half minutes. And so these two have flip-flopped, and now it looks as if Gandon has settled in there. Gets the start in this game. He's faced... 20 or 15, 16 shots here from Quebec, and he's looked solid all game long. Scrum faceoff winds up with the ramparts. Mahou, he put that right on, and another confidence save by Gandon. Ramuski, 8 and 0 when leading after two periods in this postseason. Combine that with a regular season, they're 37 and 1. They know how to lock it down when they have a lead after two. Loizo. Just puts it in deep. Jolie bumps hard with Turcott. Lamberton pokes at it. Moran turns on the Jets. It looked like it would be an odd man rush for the Ramparts. Instead, Moran makes a good defensive play. Lamberton with a blast. There's has to be at least a dozen saves now for Graves. Do we still call them blocks? <laughs> Another pass in front. Moody couldn't work his way through traffic. Lafferty. He has a point in every game in this series. He's the only Oceanic player to be able to say that. Well, RJ, we've talked about uh, Michael Jolie and just how successful he's been. He had the hat trick in game number one. In this game, he's been highly, highly effective with a goal. There he is under the four check. Just beating Graves. Doesn't mind getting his body thrown around or throwing the body. And does a good job tracking pucks there in the offensive zone. He's had a strong, strong contest here for Ramuski. Last time, the Ramparts were held to two goals or less. We're back in their first round series against Cape Breton. That was game two of the first round, a span of 16 games. The offense has really been clicking, but the top defensive team in the QMJHL seems to have found their groove here in game three. You can only hold Ramuski down, you know, for so long. 
And they've done a good job defensively all season long, even coming into this game. And despite giving up 11 goals in the first two games, Ramuski averaging 2.03 goals against. That's the best in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League during the playoffs. As they continue to sort out a time issue on the clock, they've added four seconds back onto it. Four seconds doesn't sound like much, but it could turn out playing a factor at some point in this period. Harris through the middle. That won't find anyone, so faceoff will come into the Quebec zone. Well, you look at this Ramuski team, and I think everyone expected that they would be in this position at the start of the year. Yes, they held true to form by winning a league championship, and that was all good in the regular season. But when we talked to Serge Beausoleil, he wasn't differentiating between President's Cup, Master Cup, Memorial Cup. He says, we, we come to win. We want to win, and we want to win everything. And it's that win-win mentality that has started to fester into this hockey club. That's why it's played so well today. LaBerge, the rookie, only rookie in the lineup for the Oceanic. Earned his first ever QMJHL playoff goal. That came early in the second period. And right now, that's the go-ahead goal for Ramuski. LaBerge ranked 119th for uh, National Hockey League Central Scouting going into the upcoming draft. And he looks the part. Jerome Verrier. He can't get wide on Moran, so he's forced to go back to the line. McDougal takes a shot. It's wide to the goal. Timoshov is down there. Made a quick move. That eluded St. Alain. Now trying to spin away from Kostelek, and Kostelek eliminates Timoshov from the play. The Bears dumps it in again, and it'll be time for a change for the Oceanic. Royar makes a pass ahead to Timoshov. Chipped away from him. Sent down the ice, but Kostelik wasn't to the red line. It's ice. Dimitro Timoshov back on the board here for Quebec in this game. He had struggled through the first couple of games, as did Kostelik for Ramuski. You look at the rookie leading scores in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Timoshov leading the way, and Kostelik third among scores for defensemen in the Q playoffs. Adam Ernie not on the ice with his top line. He had a fighting major with Charles David Baudouin late in the second period. So Timoshov has taken his place along with Anthony Duclair and Kurt Edgeger. That's lofted in on Gandon. Plays it for Samuel Morin. Puck cleared out to center ice. That'll force the Ramparts to back off, regroup, clear the zone. Here they come. Didn't get far inside the line. Brouillard, can he get it deep? Makes a pass to Timoshov. Lofts it down near game to Moran. Comes up with it. Goes up the middle. Hard pass to Clapperton. Bounced away from him. Timoshov with Echegaray. Timoshov makes a pass to Echegaray. He was in his skates. Oculus wraps it around. Timoshov. He's hit by Clapperton and knocked down. Rouillard gets it toward the front of the net. That's caught by Alexis Loizio. And he goes off the top of the glass, maybe with an inch or two to spare. Got it outside the line. Here come the ramparts again. There's a pass in front, but coming back was Gauthier to make a good defensive play, and the Oceanic weren't able to get the puck out of their end for long. They've got some tired players out there, and they've iced the puck. They look at the Quebec uh, ramparts in this game. Just one goal, and that top line basically unstoppable through the first two games. Beinecker, seven goals, 16 points. Ernie, Echegaray, and Duclair. Ernie, of course, off for, off for fighting. Uh, but this line has been kept relatively quiet here in this game and not even generating a lot of scoring opportunities, let alone points. Ernie and Baudouin just step back on the ice. Ramuski's exhausted right now. Ice the puck, face off win for the Ramparts. Number is saved by Gandon. Postulate, he's pressured by Kanchev. Digging deep to try to get this puck out. He does. Clapperton. He takes a shot on Fucali. Save made. Rebounds there. DeLuca. Couple of strides in. Another save for Fucali. He has to shut the door now for the Ramparts. They're down by two. Catch it. Over to Gochi. Tried to get to the middle of the ice. Couldn't get a shot. Mahu. He's hit by DeLuca. Puck comes loose. Anthony Shabato. Gets it over to Guillaume McSweeney. Heads back behind his own net. Baudouin back on the ice. 
Makes a play to DeLuca. Poked off his stick by Andrew Gary. He might get a chance. Coming over was McSween to make sure he couldn't shoot. Ryan Graves wraps it around. That bounces away from Edge Gary. McSween stops. Gets it to an open side. Now hurrying to get there, Jolie. Saw Graves was coming down, so he circled back. Banks it up ahead. DeLuca's now into the rampart zone. Chabato tried to fire DeLuca there, and Fucali was alert. He had to come out to poke the puck away from DeLuca. He would have been right in. Here's Ernie. Passes off. Shot from Brouillard. Saved by Gandon. Brouillard well, we back to the corner. Duclair in front of the net. Not one red sweater there for the Ramparts. And DeLuca, who's been out there a long time, hangs on to the puck. Gets it over to Kostelik, and he'll fire that right on Fucali. Murphy gets away from Couture. Got the puck out, too. Kostelik controls for the Oceanic. Quickly ahead to Couture. He got a touch on it, and it's back behind the Ramparts pool. Catcher. He finds the defenseman Bruyard. Nicola Bruyard takes a shot, but that's too high, and it will come all the way out to center. McDougal hurries over there. Kachev. Oh, he made a good move to the middle. Kachev with a pass to Karotsa. But Ramuski is so responsible defensively. Again, no shot for the Ramparts. Dustin Vachon. He comes. And has to turn away. Moves it down low for Lapine. McDougal takes it away. Now Garneau took a hit from Bowler. McDougal will have to hurry. Made the pass. Fiore back to McDougal. Now he's got some skating room. McDougal goes up ahead to Varian. Short pass to Timashov. Garneau heads to the net. Timashov, a backhand that's easily gloved by Gandon. And he'll hang on with 12-12 to go in the third period. The Ramparts are trailing by two. How'd you like to trade that sandwich for a photo with the Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Assemble your mighty combo today at Subway to get an Avengers collector card and a chance to win one of three heroic trips. See Marvel's Avengers Age of Ultron in theaters May 1st. Subway, eat fresh. Come on, man. I am an insurance broker, one of 35,000 across Canada. I live in the same community as my clients, and I know them by name, not a policy number. Having their best interests at heart, I find the right insurance for them from a choice of the best insurance companies. I look after them, and if they ever have to make a claim, I am there, on their side, so they can sleep easy. Your best insurance is an insurance broker. Introducing new Dry Spray Antiperspirant from Dove Men Plus Care. With 48 hour sweat protection plus a non irritant formula that goes on instantly dry. New Dry Spray. Tough on sweat, not on skin. Now instantly dry. Stay two separate times and earn a $50 Best Western gift card and use it here this summer. Or here. And even here. And when you stay, enjoy breakfast and free high speed internet. Book now at bestwestern.com. An absolutely terrific atmosphere here at the Pepsi Colisee. Now, both these teams know that they're going to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. What is on the line for them right now is the President's Cup. And when we speak to both the coaches, and Sam touched on it, they're not looking forward to 10 days to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. They want the President's Cup. Serge Beausoleil said the MasterCard Memorial Cup is in the clouds. That's a way we have to worry about winning shift by shift. And for the Quebec Ramparts, the same thing. We're not going to worry about what lies down the road. We're going to worry about what's right ahead of us. And right now, that's getting those two goals back against Ramuski. It's going to be a great tournament here in Quebec City. Guys? Really looking forward to it. We know with the teams remaining, it's going to be a fantastic field. Ramparts certainly deserve to be there. There won't be any talk about a host team that shouldn't qualify. And that's why they're going
That's your guy, RJ. That's your pick to click. I mean, you really paid attention to him yesterday in practice. He's already got an assist in this game. Right side of your screen. Picks it up in the neutral zone. Makes a nice play to get it over to Goche. It's kicked back into the zone by Kostelik. But look at the work by Goche. And watch Garneau. He doesn't get overly excited. He doesn't charge down to try and outman Ramuski in the puck. He has confidence in Goche that he'll get it to him. And as everyone's paying attention to Goche behind the net, he just slips in there, bangs it home. Excellent job there by Garneau. And a two-point effort for the youngster. First two QNJHL playoff points. They're big ones for the Ramparts. Over half a period to go here in the third, and it is a one-goal game. Moran long shot in on Fugelli. He calmly handles that. Leaves it for the Ranger pick. Ryan Graves. Slaps it around. There's Anthony Duclair. Good pass to center. Both Wan and Ernie, they've had a little something going on all game. Had a scrap late in the second period. This time, Baudouin was all over Ernie. Graves tried to keep it in, couldn't do it. Loiseau. Gets it deep, Raphael Mahou. Takes the hit, puck pops loose. Graves up ahead to Duclair. He touches it to Anchegar. Anchegar slips past Bork, but right behind him was Kostelik. Kostelik with a second effort, got it out to center. Here's Goche. Back to Clapperton, back to Gauthier, circles the net, put it in front, Eliza knocks it down. And his pass was just out of the reach of Clapperton. I think that's the way, if you're Serge Bosley, that's the way you want to see your club play. You want to see continuing to forge forward here. I think sitting on a lead against a high-powered Quebec team is not going to work. And that's the way it was for the first eight minutes of this period. And then the... Garneau goal, I think, woke up Ramuski and said, hey, this one goal lead might not make the cut for us. We better start trying to score goals again. Shots in the period, 6-2. to two. And from long range on Kukali. I want to take you back to the goal, RJ, and just show you Garneau. And he makes two really smart plays here. First of all, in the neutral zone, it's a simple chip. And then he tracks the puck. He watches everyone pay attention to Goche, and he sne sneaks in. Kind of hanging in the weeds there, waiting for it. Puts himself in good position as he slides to his right, being a left shot. Goche puts it on his tape, a lightning quick release. Has the ramparts to within a goal, and no doubt he'll be a star in this game. And post-whistle, the nastiness started to continue. You can see Gandon was there, no problem. Krosa takes a whack at him. I mean, you can't afford to do that in these big games. That is a, an absolutely senseless penalty there by Kurotsu. And it is a power play for Ramuski. An opportunity for the Oceanic to regain their two-goal lead. I mean, Gendon's there. He's got his stick up. It's a good three or four seconds before Kurotsa. There's absolutely no need for this. DeLuca. Over to Moran. Here's Bork. DeLuca. DeLuca broke out in the last series with six goals. He had a goal in game one of this series. Hasn't scored since. Moran at center. Has to wait. Everybody's back onside. And here come the Oceanic again. Out of the reach of Bucali. Samuel LaBerge rips it around. DeLuca couldn't keep it in. Ernie was tired. Just wanted to get the puck into the Ramuski zone. The booze rain down. And San Moran leads things out for the Oceanic. Makes the pass to the right wing side. It's Kostelik. He rang it off the post on the short side. A post for Kostelik coming that close to scoring on the power play. Moran to Kostelik. Is he going to shoot again? Tried to. There's another save for Graves. <laughs> Boy, he blocks a lot from that left wing side for Ramuski. Graves is there. That one stopped and it's knocked in. LeBerge just put it in on the power play. Now, wait a second. The referee is talking with the goal judge. He pointed it was a goal, then held the arms up, and now he's given the nod, and Ramuski celebrates. From my vantage point, just in the live angle, it looked like it went in the net. And you want to check things out. Of course, you got a league championship on the line. I'll take you back to the situation. Moran to the Kostelik. It bounces around, and LaBerge is there. And looks like it's the back end now. Chapato is pointing. There's LaBerge. Now watch here. That's 79 LaBerge. He'll go to the backhand. And this puck is chipped 
picked up. And there's no question it enters the net. There's LaBerge backhand. I mean, that's underneath. There's no question that's in. Talked about a big game for Olivier Garneau getting his first playoff points for Samuel LaBerge. His first two QMJHL playoff goals. And the lone rookie in the lineup for the Oceanic today has a pair. I don't think we need to call John Shannon for the parallax view on that one. <laughs> oh, there's a shot. And Dole stopped it. Brouillard makes a pass to Duclair. Baudouin gets knocked down. Couldn't get the puck up. Anthony Duclair down low. Adam Ernie. They'd love to see him in a spot where he could fire the puck. He did from a sharp angle, and Andal was tracking it all the way. Oizo. This pass to Gauthier. Didn't connect. Gauthier still got to it. Moved it to the corner. Duclair. Over to Murphy. And Duclair heads to the player's bench. Wants a change. Murphy got it just over center. And that's another shift done for the big line for the Ramparts. They're down by two. Eight and a half to go in the third. Big hit by LaBerge down there. Jan Kostelik. He gets it to Devin St. Hilaire. Buck gets back to Kostelik. Reverses it to Simone Bourne. LaBerge gets enough of it to redirect it into the Quebec end. Kostelik to center. He'll dump it in. Ramuski's okay with playing some boring hockey right now. They're up by two. They just want to dump the puck in the Quebec zone. Make things difficult as the Ramparts try to make their way through center. Guillaume Gauthier. His pass knocked down by Lapine. Fashon heads the other way. Lapine's with him. Fashon's pass too far ahead for Lapine. Gauthier. He stops, waiting for somebody to emerge open. It was Pima's job, but Fashon was right with him. Couture chips it back out to center. Now Graves has to wait. There's a long shot wide of the goal. Baudouin gets it to Lapine. Another clear for the Oceana. Ramuski lost the first two games of this series on home ice. It was only the second time all season they lost back to back at home. On the road, they have been excellent. Nine straight road wins. That includes a 7 0 record in this postseason. And this is a tough building. 10,549 in attendance here at the Call of Six. Zachary Moody, lone man heading into the Ramuski end. Everybody covered by an Oceanic player. As far as the Ramparts are trying to get somebody open. Puck comes to Moody. Look at all the Oceanic in front of their own goal. Too many to get through. And they come up with a puck and send it right back down the ice. Raphael Mau. This blue line for the Ramparts has produced offensively. Adam Ernie's back out there. He's got Barrier to his left. Ernie takes the shot. Murphy comes in. He's had the sights pretty much bang on in this series. That bounces around in front of the net. We're just in time by Charles David Baudouin. Nicola Brouillard trying to weave his way past Michael Jolie. Has to pass to Ernie. He shoveled it in front, but quickly cleared by Baudouin. Up ahead of the play is Jolie. He had to stop at the blue line. Now DeLuca. Oh, a nice move by Anthony DeLuca. Stopped by Foucault. He's looking for the rebound. It was with Adam Ernie. Cleared, but not out. Kostelik a shot, and Foucault saw that one and knows exactly where it is now. It's in his glove, and he gets the whistle. And Zach Foucault has to be perfect. Not much time remaining. Just under six minutes. And what a goal for Ramuski to get him back up by two. Many studies prove a serving of chocolate milk within 30 minutes of every workout has an ideal mix of fluids, carbs, and protein to help your body recover. Chocolate milk, the original recovery drink. So what about that stock? Sure thing, right? Actually, knowing the kind of risk that you're comfortable with, I'd steer clear. Really? Really. Straight talk. Now, based on your strategy, I do have some other thoughts. And it's a big time. deal, and it's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. 
I love my tablet. I can list my car for free on AutoTrader with just a couple of taps, and then I can switch over to my grandchildren's social feeds. Hmm? Oh! Anyone can buy and sell like a pro with AutoTrader.ca. Ramuski leads 4-2 thanks to this play by Massimo Carozza. He takes a whack at goaltender Gendon, 200 feet from your own zone. The puck has been covered for a good three seconds. That results in this Ramuski power play, and that's where LaBerge buries it. You know, Garneau had just scored for Quebec, brought them to within a goal. Carozza on your right takes the penalty. LaBerge makes him pay, and isn't that funny? The hockey gods saying, hey, why take a, a senseless penalty because you know it's going to cost you, and that's exactly what happened for Ramuski to extend its lead back to two. Uphill climb for the Ramparts. Still plenty of time, though. Five and a half minutes remaining in the third period. Ramparts can manage to get one in the next couple of minutes. They might be in okay shape. Ramuski so good defensively. Nobody was open. That pass goes all the way down the ice for icing. Well, so many things happen, RJ. I mean, you have the momentum. You have the building back on your side. You have close to... Uh, 11,000 people here. They're fired up. They're anxious to see your team take a 3 0 lead. You're back to within a goal, and then you take the penalty. That kills the momentum. And then double jeopardy when you give up the power play marker. Adam Ernie along with Kurt Echegarry and Anthony Duclair. They're on the ice for Quebec. That line previous to this game has been near unstoppable. Clapperton keeps the puck down low. Gauthier comes in to help out. Controls along the board. Scott it to Kostelik. He was hoping for a redirect by LaBerge, who's played one whale of a game for Ramuski. Gauthier keeps the puck in. Takes the shot. And there was some traffic for Kelly. Trying to get low to see this puck. It was wide of the goal. Adam Ernie lofts it out to center ice, and the top line has to head off again. They spent the majority of that shift defending. Graves chops at it. This will come back out to center. Moran gets in the way of Guillaume Gauthier, so he couldn't get inside the Ramuski end. This one goes right in on Gandon, and there will be no chances taken from the Oceanic at this point. Gandon hangs on. 4.26 to go. Ramuski's up by two. I'm an insurance broker, one of 35,000 across Canada. I live in the same community as my clients, and I know them by name, not a policy number. Having their best interests at heart, I find the right insurance for them from a choice of the best insurance companies. I look after them, and if they ever have to make a claim, I am there on their side, so they can sleep easy. Your best insurance is an insurance broker. You dreamt of a condo with a view. But then I showed you a suburb school, and the view of your daughter's future made a house look really cool. Let a Remax agent guide you. Remax, dream with your eyes open. Tim Hortons Dark Roast Coffee. A brand new blend of Arabica beans roasted with care and brewed for a rich full flavor and smooth finish. With over 85 million cups served, we seem to be on to something. Try it today. The battle against time against the elements, against each other. Driven by shouts of the loyal, striving to gain a second, fighting not to lose an inch. An endless, grueling grind through the most beautiful place on Earth. The opening chapter in cycling's most prestigious trifecta. A summer of cycling begins now. Giro d'Italia, May 9th to 31st on Sportsnet One. Blue Jays back in action tomorrow against the Baltimore Orioles. Marco Estrada will get the start. 6.30 Eastern time, 3.30 Pacific. That game will be on Sportsnet 1. In Quebec City for Game 3 of the President's Cup Championship Final here in the QMJHL. The Quebec Ramparts, the host of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. They're taking on the... Ramuski Oceanic, the top team in the regular season. So two QMJHL powerhouses trying to determine the championship in this league. Quebec winning the first two of this series in Ramuski. But the Oceanic in control here in game three at Le Colisee, up four to two with just over four minutes to go. 
Dimitro Timoshov, the rookie scoring leader in the QMJHL. He was working some magic down low, but just couldn't get the puck to the front of the net. Frederick Gauthier, smart defensively, got that puck out. Here comes Jerome Verrier. Long shot, kicked aside by Gandon. Mahou wanted to pinch down. Some gambles will have to be taken now by the Ramparts. Might open up some chances for Ramuski. Gauthier gets it over to Mahou. Raphael Mahou finds Verrier. Verrier's pass gets to Timoshov. Everybody back. Gauthier trying to find room to get a shot away. What a backhand through the blue paint. Skating out to center is Vachon. Did he bank this too far? He did. He was hoping to track it down himself, but he iced it. Well, Sean, one of those players who's raised his level of play here in the playoffs for Serge Beausoleil and the Ramuski Oceanic. Uh, Sean acquired from Sherbrooke for a seventh round pick in May last year and also close to beating the puck just couldn't do it. But nonetheless good hustle on the part of Vachon. 327 remains in the third period. Ramparts need two to tie. Oceanic conglomerating in front of their own goal. They get the puck down the ice again but once again it is icing. Now you look at the series and you know Damien talked about it the last two times the uh, two teams were in the MasterCard Memorial Cup and played for a league title was in Mississauga in 2011. Jared Maiden scored the game winning goal for Owen Sound in what was a fabulous seven game series that one ended in overtime. Face off win for the Oceanic a good breakout. Ramparts trying to make their way back into the Ramuski end at Chigari. The captain of the Quebec Ramparts, he knows his team's 11-game winning streak is on the line right now. Brouillard. Now he starts meeting up with some opposition as he got to the Ramuski side of center. Got the puck in deep, though. Go chase back there to help out defensively. Brouillard comes down from his point position. Now he's battling against Loiseau for this puck. Etchegary had it. Brouillard makes a pass in front. Nobody there for the Ramparts. Matt Murphy now. He gets activated from his point position. And Ernie was in front of the net. Here's Duclair. Takes the shot. Now he takes it. Gandon got a piece of it. Another pass. Here's Murphy with a shot. Faked it. ducali has gone to the bench. Extra attacker coming out. Murphy. Waiting. Somebody's in his lane. It's Loizo. He can't shoot. Here's Brouillard. Now he works his way to the middle of the ice. Duclair blasts one. And that winds up over on the far side. Brouillard back in front. Ernie chipped at it. Puck cleared by Ramuski. Not out though. Murphy with a shot. And Gandol makes the save. And he hangs on. All kinds of pressure being applied by the Ramparts. But Louis Philippe Gandol was big when he had to be for Ramuski. Gandol got lucky there because he took a whack after he covered up the puck at Echegaray in front of the net. Look at the action he has to face. That shot he stretches out to make a save. Everyone thought the play was dead because the puck they thought was out. It wasn't. It continued on. Another shot where Gandol has to be aware as he goes post to post. And he just continues to track the puck. Echegaray there in front of the net. A quick exchange. And you can see Gandon doing a nice job just fighting through the puck. There's a shot that just misses Etchegary in front of the net before play is stopped. Face off win for the Ramparts. Ducali's on the bench. Extra attackers out there. Under two minutes to go. They're down by two. Puck sent to the corner. Tima shot. He'll have some time here. Makes a pass to Murphy. Time is the enemy of the Ramparts. They need two. Brouillard shot is wide. Tima shot comes up with it. Brouillard now. His shot, that's blocker to side by Gandor. He saw it somehow with tons of traffic in front of him. Brouillard again. He can't shoot this time. Got it over to Timoshov. All he can do is move the puck down deep. All the play being dictated by the Ramparts, but they can't get anything past Gandor. And time's running out. Brouillard lets one fly, but that bounces harmlessly behind the net. Murphy goes to Brouillard. Open his Timoshov. He tried to slap a pass in front of the net. That didn't connect with anybody. Murphy to Brouillard. Looks at the net. Can't shoot. Passes to Murphy. There's Timoshov into the final minute now. Timoshov takes a shot. And that's both Wynn that blocked it before it got through to his goalie. Gauthier. That one's blocked by Baudouin too. 
Ramuski exhausted. Jolie a chance to clear. He looks at the net. He missed it. Jolie missed the open net. He's iced the puck. And there's 43.5 seconds to go. Ramuski's up by two, and you'd have to think there'll be a timeout here. Well, Jolie, I mean, he didn't have any gas to get at the center ice. And so he just fired it, hoping he'd hit the net. When you look at this constant pressure here and a couple of block shots. Charles David Baudouin picked up from the Drummondville Voltageurs gets back to back blocks. Oh, so crucial. The block shots, I mean, they become such a huge story throughout the course of the playoffs. They have been that way in this game. Ryan Graves for Quebec, Baudouin for Ramuski, and the Oceanic hanging on here. There's Danny Renault down at the bench for Quebec, a former assistant coach to Serge Beausoleil in Ramuski, now working with Philippe Boucher and trying to describe how he wants his group to execute this faceoff. Got to get one quick here with time running down. Ramuski, the top defensive team in the QMJHL, and they've really made it difficult for Quebec to get any clean shots through. Ramparts closed to within one in this third period. A big power play goal by Samuel Leberge, his second of the game, his first two QMJHL playoff goals. Kostelik off a face-off win from Gauthier. Wrapped around, sent down the ice. It's icing again. Fresh legs out there, and it killed off a few more seconds, so that works out okay for Ramuski. And especially with Goche now being able to take the draws for Ramuski, one of the best in the league all season long. Goche, <laughs> you'd have to say he was probably cheating on that face off with his stick on the other side. <laughs> Linesman wisely didn't drop this time he did. It's a win for the Ramparts. They got to get something to the net. They have to put it in now if they hope to get two in time. Bruyard just missed. Moran. He takes it to the corner. He's okay to keep it along the boards there. Out of a dangerous scoring position. Goche drags it along the boards. And now he chips it out. That won't be enough for icing. And it won't make it to the open net. This is going to be a win for the Ramuski Oceanic. They put an end to the Ramparts 11 game winning streak. They needed this one. They lost the first two of the series on home ice. And the road teams have dominated the President's Cup Final. Oceanic are back in the series. A 4-2 win in Game 3. And they trail Quebec two games to one in the final. Who would have thought that uh, when this series started, two teams that are really difficult to play against on home ice, and yet the home team has yet, has yet to win a game in the series. And this is a huge bounce back for Ramuski. I mean, you look at Gendon, the goaltending situation better. Samuel Morin, much better in this game. Goche doing his thing, winning draws. And when your best players are your best players, come playoff time, that is usually a good recipe for success. It was exactly the case for Ramuski in this game. Top team in the regular season comes through with a win when they desperately needed it. Here's our insurance play of the game. It's brought to you by your local insurance broker. Get a broker on your side because your best insurance is an insurance broker. Well, no question. This is what won the game for Ramuski. Yes, it's 3-2 at that point. There's Carozza. He goes in for Quebec, takes a slashing call against Gang Dawn, and on the respective power play, LeBear's in front of the net to the backhand. That would increase the lead to 4-2. It would deflate the building entirely. It would extend the lead to 2 and essentially put an end to this hockey game. Road teams have dominated the President's Cup Final. Ramparts see their 11-game winning streak come to an end. Ramuski's won 10 straight on the road, and they're back in this series, trailing at two games to one. Both these teams will be in the MasterCard Memorial Cup, which begins in just 12 days. Game one will be Friday, May 22nd. The WHL champ against the Quebec Ramparts. Thanks for watching, everyone.